As soon as you got elected, they made you chair. What's that? You volunteered. As soon as you got elected, they made you chair. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, was good meeting with me. Okay. <laughs> I won't ask for more. Start with the Pledge of Allegiance and the invocation given by Reverend Shaw. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Shall we bow in prayer? Father, we want to say thank you for this beautiful day you've given to us. We want to say thank you for the country in which we live and the freedoms we enjoy. And we want to thank you for the men and women who fought to defend our freedom and to pr protect our nation. Father, we want to say thank you now for these who uh, serve in our community. Uh, Lord, we just pray that you would give them guidance and wisdom and uh, direction. And Lord, we just uh, ask your richest blessing upon them in the business they conduct today. Lord, each day may we seek your will and uh, seek to follow you. Of course, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. For those of you who haven't met him, Reverend Wayne Shaw is the new pastor of the Christian Church here in Erie. He also comes from Oklahoma. He was a state senator down there until uh, recently. Welcome to Erie, Thank you.
Do you want? I'm not very good at this. You're welcome to use the side of my table here too if you need one. Or... We've had this land. There's a whole family of us, and we divided it up. And we went through all these abstracts. We've got all kinds of them. And then when some of the neighbors buys in and they want to change things all of a sudden. And this is where it's drawn to now. He, uh, this Beechner purchased the, this out here in front and but we had this easement all the way up through there and to our place now they didn't it had been cl uh, closed before this road had been closed, but we got it open, and then it's just been a mess ever since. Mr. Beecher's come in on it, so. And the other, he even, somebody tore our gate all loose, and when my sister-in-law, Joanne, which was Dean's wife took and she took over why she made some kind of a settlement with her, uh, Dean's son or something. I never did hear about that, but anyway, it was left us to, in the dark. But then she was leaving part of this uh, to her son from the second, from her first marriage. And uh, I don't know, I was kind of left out of all that too, so that's, and then when we got things going, why this fence, these gates appeared up one day we went out there and, well, I've heard from it, from Bill and, and all the rest that it was going on and I never could make sense out of it. And I said, well, I'll get the keys. Well, I had to go through, to get the first key, I had to go through the Beecher bunch, because they was, and they, they sent me up, so I went up to St. Paul to pick up the key so I could get it. Well, you'll have to just put your own lock on. Well, I did. It wasn't long until my lock was gone. And so I went back to the Corky and he told me that I'd have to come up with the keys and locks and go with to, to it. So I did. But I put just a splice link on the ch chain on our gate. Well, if you could just screw off, of course, it might take a wrench after the years. And then Travis, the one that was working for me, I mean, not working for me, but he was farming my land at that time. And he said he went up there and uh, it was, you couldn't get that splice link loose. Well, it wasn't very long until somebody tore the set to that gate big double gate off the hinges and 
made the gate. So then they put up all kinds of stuff. And so I contacted Mr. Beecher. Yeah, he says, I'll send somebody down there to fix it. Well, that only went halfway, and I, I'd been sick. I'd had my hip broke and everything else. I mean, it was trouble everywhere, it seemed like. And it was getting worse. And so I finally got the, the keys. And then the other day, we went out here on this. I went out there that I had the, the guys give me a appraisal of what my place was worth. Of course, we couldn't really agree on with all of us. We didn't really sit down and work out of what we could sell it for. And I'd put a price and they all told me I was too high. They couldn't handle it, so I got a a uh, guy from the this what's the name of it? Mossy. Mossy Oak to come in and look it over and when we got there, why? When I got there, why well, the gate was still off the hinges, and so they said that's why it's tore up. We ain't got no way of fixing it. So I told him, I says we can get in. Well. Be uh, Beecher sent his, you know, he talk, called and told me that I'd have to, to get in, I'd have to get permission to, through his, uh, well, it was his nephew, actually, what it was, or somebody, it was Bobby Beecher, and so we went in, we fixed it, I drove down there, I said it's too wet, I took him down there with me and we got down there and I got stuck. Well, he said, well, he left his truck up at the road. And he said, I'll walk back up there and get it. But we had took this gate and lifted it up, the two of us, and stuck it back on the Hinge the bolt and got the gate where we could open it. And we screwed this splicer link out and we went in through it. I did. And then Mr. Beecher cornered our ass and said, You ain't uh, allowed in here. And I said, Since when? He says, Well, I don't want no. Uh, Hunters in there. And I said, Oh, is that your problem? I said, Well, I'm trying to just get things straightened out because I said, My sister in law got run into this same thing that I was the one keeping everybody out of it. And I said, I told them all, all they had to do is get the key that I had and had given them and come in up there and drive up there and I had drove up there but when I drove down there then I couldn't do it by myself so but we did we went in and then Mr. Pinker says I ain't gonna allow no hunters in there up here anywhere well this was he told me what it was what he thought it was worth it. And so when I told Mr. Beechner, why he said, well, I guess for me to, if I was going to buy it, I'd have to outbid them. And I says, yeah, I'll consider it because I'm asking a lot more than what that is. And he, he said, well, can I go down there? I said, sure, the gate's open. You can open it now. Well, I don't want to go in there. 
I've seen, already seen him. Yeah. He has. He seen it. He's been going in for whatever four or five years and trying to control everything. I think the issue <clears throat> ultimately is, and correct me if I'm wrong, man, there's this piece of 30th Road that runs east of Yale. And the issue is whether that's open or closed road. Right. right. Because and if it's if I, it's I a, did some digging on that yeah. mm -hmm. and there's there's no record of that road ever being closed. So it gate shouldn't be up there. No, it it really it, shouldn't be. Uh, and actually it not only runs a quarter mile to your property, yeah. it, it theoretically runs the next quarter mile clear over to the county line. To uh, down our side of the place, but that's the creek. <clears throat> right, it did one just about to the creek. It's to the creek. Proper county. Mine goes over to the creek and goes down through the field on the other side. Yeah. So if this is an open quarter mile right here, yes. if this is an open quarter mile, there shouldn't be a gate <clears throat> here at the corner of Yale and 30th. Right. Um, and you can't find anything vacating it, right? I, ca I can't find anything that's made it to the record, okay? okay. <clears throat> now, I do know there has been at least one other case where people were allowed to put up a gate across the road uh, and there were other owners down there, but they supposedly worked out an agreement ahead of time and so forth yes. and so on. And that might appear in the commission minutes, but it, but it wouldn't necessarily show up in anything. Well, I, th I think that's what happened because when I was up here uh, with this one that owned it before Beecher, why, and I had no trouble with him. And, but they stated in there that it could be operated by gates at a certain procedure. Well, And when the gates was put in, I was never contacted or nothing. So the road's open, they can't put gates on it unless they're no. approval of the, all the gates and land owners. If yeah. I remember correctly, oh, you go through the gates and there's a sign that says dead end road. No, it says uh, road closed. Road, it says road closed? It says road closed. Okay, a great well, big yellow sign. I, ha I don't have anything that proves Okay. So, <clears throat> long and short of it is, if that's an open road, then unless you guys have approved a gate on that, I think I think it shouldn't be there. So we just need to get to the bottom of that. Let let everybody know that this is still open. If there wants, to, if there needs to be a gate there, then there's going to have to be a different procedure. Okay. Sorry. Yeah, uh, but what beach near come in, we did have a, a fence down each side of this road when I got the, it open. And he bulldozed them all out. And then he put the gates up. Best that I know, that's my guess. Well, I think we can confirm, make sure we confirm what we already think we know, and then uh, somebody can get in touch with, with them and ask them if they know anything about right. if the commission ever did anything in the past. Okay. Yeah. But, you, but you wouldn't have gone through the minutes and all that stuff. I, I looked in deep books a right. little, but uh, the, the part that's right west of you, they purchased in 2008. So that's probably the time when they came in and cleared it out. Yes, that's the time they changed it because the one before me, I mean before him, they had, a, I can't think of his name. Thomas? Thomas. Mm -hmm. And I come up here and we got it from the commission that we could use that. Well, if it's closed, that's not really a 
county issues, if that's an open road, then we will we will make sure it becomes open. The county needs to make sure. Well, somebody yeah. can come up with something beyond what I have. Yeah. Right. <clears throat> Let me ask one question. If, if you did determine that it was closed through some research, then what would be the procedure for that? And the, depending on who the landowner was, you probably need an easement of ingress and egress. Because the way mm -hmm. I understand it from William is that you can't get in the other side because that creek's there. Right. Right. They'd it's, have to come in through some <laughs> other part of the family and come from Proper County and cross Hickory Creek, which would not be. Is it really easy? Is it landlocked? Like, are they are they locked in where they can't access anything? Yeah, there's there's, there's no houses. public road to any okay. place but it. No, there's not. Gotcha. The Crawford County Road stops a full half mile east of the of the county line. Yeah. So that'd be the that'd be the next step if it was. We're not finding anything like that. So if it was closed. We have to work out an easement arrangement. The easement would be now, now, is that something that it could be denied? That's a that's a really simple question with a really long explanation. Um, uh, well, we, it's possible. Maybe, maybe, maybe not. Depending on what the circumstances are. Okay. At one time, I'm sure this was all one piece of property. Yes, your my, my, my dad, long property on my dad Robert County. and uh, got it that he, I've got papers somewhere in this book back here that shows all that, that we got easements and we, they found a little oil and uh, they, got, they got their a lease on, uh, supposed to be on that road too. The pipeline line to come in and uh, goes up across it, why that was, and we've had trouble with that, and I don't know, it's just, it's been a mess and a headache. One last question, to, uh, let's say that uh, uh, it's, it's not a closed road, like where we're at right now with it. Um, so what would be uh, expected like time frame for resolution? We wouldn't be back here for another couple of weeks. A couple of weeks. We, we alternate weeks. Okay. So that'd probably be the soonest you can get a result. Well, I do, I do remember that the uh, road crew, I mean, the, yeah, the road people come in and they cleared this out for us. It might have been closed now before. Tend to make me think it's open. Unless they made an arrangement to bring the road up to spec and then here's your road and this is the last time. A minimum maintenance yeah. road? Yeah. That'd be the only way, but your egress to your property shouldn't be hindered, so. Yeah, well, that's what I thought too, but. Uh, we'll do a little, we'll do a little search and see if we can't get it resolved or figure out what the state of the world is at least. Is it Thomas? And then even the, uh, my nephew that was farming and Beechner told has cut him off and everything else. But then you blame me for cutting it off. Okay. We'll take a look at it. Do you need we have his contact in? Done with me? I think so. I, I don't know about you guys, but the guy in the blue shirt, he looks smart. He must have gone to a really he must have gone to a fantastic high school. I don't really good football. Yeah, he had to carry the weight of other players, didn't he? Yeah. <laughs> well, I had some pretty good sized brothers, too. <laughs> When this death takes over on it, why? And then when we was settling the estate, we bought our sis, my sister out. And but then on the last two years, yeah, take care.
Okay, most of you know Lois Carlson, and I have off. It was just to tell you a little bit about a program that uh, Mim Erie, the Erie Community Museum, is participating in. Um, the Mimiri Museum is more than just an Erie Museum. Uh, for instance, we have the total, the history, not total, we never have the total history, but the history of all of the country schools in Neosho County uh, in the museum. We initiated that uh, program. We're one of the few uh, museums in the state that decided that that was important and have that. But. Uh, we are wondering if any of you have ever been to our museum. No. You have. Any of the commission? No. no. Uh, we'd like to invite you to come to our museum. We want you to see what we have. Uh, Chinook has wonderful museum, but we would like for you to see what we have at Erie. It's called the Mem Erie Historical Society. And uh, we're part of the SEK Museum Alliance, as are the museums in the rest of the county. And they came out with this passport. And so we'd like to give each of you a museum passport. And you take that to the museums that are listed there. And it, on the second page, you'll see the list of all the museums. It's a very extensive list. You visit a museum. Most of them are free. A few have a charge. Uh, and then you have them sign your passport. And then at the end of the year, you turn your uh, passport in and you're entered into a drawing. It's trying to get people to small communities, small museums. And so you can, we will set up an individual tour for any of you to fit your schedule. We'll set up a, a a tour at your convenience for the three of you to come together, whatever would work. But we would like to get you into the museum to see what we have and to see that we're more than a city museum. We are an area museum, as you can attest. And uh, we would just like for you to be aware. So what are your hours so the public knows? Well, uh, we just are opening the 1st of May. We're dark through the winter. Okay. But there is a note on the door. There's names listed. Okay. If you're in town and you have the time and you want to give one of those names a call, somebody will come up and let you in and give you a tour. Great. And my name isn't on the door, but you can call me too. Okay. <laughs> okay? Yeah. And, and we'll give you a tour anytime. Even if it's 9 o'clock in the morning or 9 o'clock at night, I would do it if you would come to the museum. So we just want you to know that we're here and that we think we have a very good museum. We moved down to the location we're in and we're busting at the seams. So we've got a lot for you to see. Okay? Any questions? Thank you. Any questions? No, thank you. This is a little bit lighter than that. Thank you. Some more oh, was there, I'm sorry. Was there somebody else? Yes. One more public comment, I guess. Okay. Or we need to ask. Yeah. Sorry about that. You can probably just open that door all the way again. Do I now? You can open it. I got on. I'm really oh, oh, was that one here? You hear me? I think you got. I don't want to hear me. We have to keep our door open. 
Alright, I brought a little something something. I'm sure you guys already know why I'm here, so. Well, you might tell the public. I will. Okay. Hi, Nick. Welcome back. I am Carla Rush. I am with the appraiser's office. I've been a personal property supervisor for the 20 years next month. Oh, I'm old. Um, what you have in front of you is just a printout I got from Sydney. I highlighted. This is just my job what I do for the appraiser's office. Um, I know nobody likes taxes, so we're not a very popular office, but also with that said, if we didn't do our job, can we be a big problem? <laughs> so I, like I said, I just highlight the totals to give you kind of an idea of what I do. Uh, one is trucks, which would be like six, and 20 in trucks. The other is, um, uh, whatever it says at the top, oil. I think the next one is gas, which, clarity here, I don't do oil and gas, but it is under personal property. And then the very last page is um, uh, personal property, which is what I do. Boats. Trailers, mobile homes, so on and so forth. Um, so I just kind of wanted you guys to know that what I do really is important around here. And I work very hard and very proud <laughs> of what I do. And it took me a long time to be able to say that. Um, I've had a lot of heartaches the last couple of years. And I got up every morning and came to work. Because that's what I got paid for. And even after losing my daughter, which was horrid, I got up and came to work. So, my question is, I was told I have to move out of where I'm at. I think we were doing the convenience with the payroll and keeping it closer to the clerk's office and the treasurer's office. Which in turn, you're sending me clear opposite ends of where I work. Well, I that I payroll and, and HR has been in there for years. I just don't understand why they have to move and why I have to do it in the middle of my busy season. Mm -hmm. I'm right in the middle of this. Well, I think with the problems with the payroll, have you know, in the last several months since I've been here, we're trying to rectify it as right. fast as possible. Right. Um, oh, I understand. And, I'm, I'm not. I'm not. I know. I just, uh, yeah. Yeah. We're in a pinch with this. Uh, if we don't get it straightened out now, we're we're already behind two years. So I'm trying. But to I don't it. think moving offices will fix it. But what's it going to do? Uh, I think it's convenient to all the people that are handling the payroll because both the treasurer and the clerk are together, we're going to put the payroll with it for supervision of the process. 20 years. This will be nine times I've got to shift it. Nine. How, how many other people have to move that often? <laughs> this is my opinion. I, I work, know, work, work I better know, where it's at with it. In the clerk's office, and if, the treasurer's right there beside each other. Right. They're going to be hand, hand in hand every day. So My thought, if I'm going to be forced to move, because I don't want to move, so if I have to move, can it have to be now? Can I finish what I got to do? How long will that, what, sorry. Well, um, what is your season I have here? to get out, I have yeah, to what's finish. Time for I have to finish personal property, mail out notices May the 1st, then they got like two weeks uh, to uh, appeal. And then June, what is it, June the 1st, or yeah, I have to certify the clerk. Been quiet for a while. 
I'd like to do it for you, but to make it sit in the respect that I asked for an executive session. Great. Customer peace. Thank you for listening. I appreciate you coming in. Yeah. Okay. And I think we do need to hear all sides. Yeah. Okay. So, Thanks. is it just you in there? Mm -hmm. Okay. For now, I mean, they have talked oh, earlier about moving somebody else in there, but because okay. they're sardines. <laughs> how, long, how long have you been in that office? Since, there, uh -huh, since we moved the commission mm -hmm. room down here. Yeah, yes. I'm like, I don't know. Whenever mm -hmm. you guys moved, it was, after, I, I it was after me the last time. I don't know. I've been a year. I can't even too long. I just mean all this revolves. So <laughs> you know, I, don't, I don't know. I really don't. I like it there. It's quiet even while we're here. <laughs> we do right. appreciate your years of service. All right. And the work Thank that you, you. Do to keep all of our property sure. taxes straight. It's not easy no, because you easy. figure, you know, you might have one person. Look at you got a thousand people. You have a thousand people might have. 10 pieces of whatever and trying to keep track of it and hunt them down, you know, well, I hate hunting them down. I don't go out and hunt them down, I promise. Um, it's, it's, it's a bit, but I like it here. Alrighty. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks, Thank Carl. you. Thank you, Carl. Was there anyone else for public comment? <laughs> no. Okay. Thank you. I'm not sure who else is here. Now it's your turn, Sam. Thank you. Well, during the last 30 minutes, one of my hearing aid batteries died. <laughs> I don't know if I'm speaking too loudly or too softly, so you just have to tell me to calm down and speak up. Yes. Uh, Stan Badler here on the, what I remember the name being, the, was the Neosho Ridge Farm Advisory Committee. That's not exactly the name that's on the applications, but, but I think we agreed that it would deal with more than radar activated lights over time. So the good news is we finally have six citizens who have applied. And I don't know that there's, you know, we've spent a lot of time on it. I don't know if there's anybody else there wanting to do it. So after I quit talking, my hope is that you'll go ahead and appoint these six people. I assume you all have copies of their applications, that's correct? We just received them right before the meeting. Okay, well, I, I could read the names. A. Trace Goodwin from uh, Urin Erie. A. Celia McBride, also Urin Erie. Uh, Brian Hoover, Rural Gale Park. A. Brian Badeau with a fair address, Leroy Burke with a fair address, and a Julia Johnson with an eerie address. And so those, those are our six applicants. When I get done talking, I will ask you to formally appoint them. Uh, I did want to uh, bring you up to date a little bit. Uh, Gail is the only person among three of you whose email address I had. So I've kept her in touch and not meaning to exclude the other two of you. Uh, I had read in the Parsons Sun, uh, I guess a Lovett County Commissioner said, you need FAA approval to install the radar activated lights. So I started trying to investigate that and uh, that is the most difficult website. But fortunately, my former administrative assistant in Oklahoma City, her husband retired from FAA. And thanks to him, I was able to find the people to get a hold of. And uh, they sent me some, some uh, regulations to look at. Uh, but the, the implication I got in the telephone call was that the owner operator the turbines would do the application but when i went through those regs what it looked to me like the regs were about were before the things went up in the first place and the idea that the flashing lights would be on there i could not see a place on my own investigation uh, to go through the regs to have a second application for flashing lights so i have a call in to the man that, that i spoke to I'll let you know 
assuming he's going to return my call, what I find out about that. He did give me a piece of information that, that I didn't know about. He said, you know, terrain is really the issue. But he said, uh, Mr. Bassler, if you've got any small airports in the area, unless there is somebody physically on duty at night, they have radar activated lights already. And I checked with the city of Parsons, and indeed, Tri Cities already has them. And somebody may know that. All small, air, yeah, all small airports do. Okay. So it's not a new concept, it's just putting it in a new place. Evidently, if I understood him right, just like the pilots activate the airport lights, I guess the pilots would also activate the wind car lights. I don't know exactly how that works, but that's kind of what I'm, is that kind of what So they would have maps that that they have, they carry with them that would say okay. in this area then there is a wind farm and they would know that if they want those lights activated then they could activate them with their radio. Oh, so that, that eliminates I think some of the concerns that we talked about earlier. So uh, I guess the step I need to find out is whether or not since the turbines are already up, whether or not it's safe to set for that location to switch out the lights. So I don't have an answer to that right. today. So I think there's been, uh, I guess with my reading, I think there's been six uh, farms in the nation that they've added this to later. So okay. it has been done, Good. but it's just not widespread. So probably if we dig far enough, we can find the information. Well, uh, yeah, I, I hope so too. So uh, again, what I, I need from you, I think as quickly as possible, is a designee from Apex and a designee from Liberty Empire and their contact information. Unfortunately, these applications don't have email and telephone, so I'll need to run those people down somehow or another and get that information. But uh, as soon as I have that and have all the contact information, I'm, I'm ready to begin the meeting process. The only other thing I would ask of you is I have heard that the federal government has said COVID money we do have the uh, money coming in from uh, Apex, and uh, my hope is that you'll plan to participate in the cost of this. And, and as I stand here today, I, I hope we can persuade both Apex and Liberty Empire to participate in the cost of it as well. It seems reasonable to me that it should be that kind of joint effort. But, uh, yeah, I'm just a poor citizen trying to persuade folks, so we'll see how that comes out. Uh, so I guess, unless you have any other questions. So, I'm please. sorry, I guess maybe I don't remember, but if you were going to go by the name of Neosho County Advisory, what was the name I again? think the, the name that I, I gave was Neosho Ridge ne Advisory Committee, I think. No, Neosho Ridge Wind Farm Advisory Committee. Okay. Uh, again, the idea that there would be other things to troubleshoot once they got past the lights, the hope being that First and foremost, we could get the lights. And again, I probably don't need to do this, but I, I will give one final appeal before before I leave. According to Edna residents in the Parsons Sun, they see the lights. My former legal secretary at Sheridan says she sees the lights. I don't, I bet people in Erie see the lights. I don't know. People in Chinook. Do you see them see the lights. Yes. That's got to affect property values all over this place. It's got to. I mean, when we come home from Portland, let's drive into that mess. It, it, you know, the daytime, we can tell we're living in the country. At night, it just looks like we're living. I'm not sure the Oklahoma City Airport is as lighted up as that countryside is. Uh, it's just not attractive to live in. So, appreciate your concern and your help, and hope that you'll uh, uh, appoint these six willing citizens. I'll make a motion to approve the six appointments of Mr. Bazard as brought for the commission. Do I need to name them all off? If you want more. Okay. Uh, Brian Badeau. Leroy Burke. Hoover, Julie Johnson, 
Trace Goodwin. Yes, uh, CD, I think the first thing was. Sam and your product. Who's that? Yeah, see you. Gilmore, do you still have my cards? Uh, sure. It's not a test if you don't have any of those. Okay. If you can email me the Apex and Liberty Empire people and their contact information, uh, and your email too, if you would, uh, that will that will certainly help us move along to the first meeting. Thank you all. Good to see you, sir. Good to see you. Nice to meet you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Sam. Are you Gina? I'm Heather. You're Gina. I'm Heather. I knew you were, but I was, somebody told me she, Gina was down there. She's out in the hallway. She's in okay. the hall of try down back at the office. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> we wanted to, uh, Kenny Blair, which is the county's brake engineer, and Mike Brown uh, are here. We wanted to kind of give you guys an update on what we've been up to with the detour due to the beginnings of the closures on 169. I'm going to yield the floor uh, to Kenny and let him kind of go through uh, where we are and, and what the plan is. Uh, the one thing I do want to restate, just so you know, is I had made a commitment uh, for money up front, the commitment still holds, so what Kenny is going to be presenting, the Monarch Cement Company will be picking the tab up for, whether we have to hire it done, with, with, uh, we'll let Mike and Kenny kind of go through that, but I'll, I'll yield and we'll let Kenny get through it. Okay, thank you. I mean, if I can approach, I'd like to hand it out. Yeah, I'm very excited to do it. Long time I see. Yeah, it's been a long time. We were asked to look at um, coming up with a route to, uh, I think you were asking about an empty route up, uh, let's see, one way and then a loaded route the other way. That's right? right. And so uh, we, you know, we looked at, we do your bridge inspection, so we have all your forwards, we have all your load ratings. And what we have here is a, an option to, use signing to allow the, these cement trucks to uh, go empty up Santa Fe and come back loaded down Plummer. Um, if you look on the sheet there, what we're showing, if you look at the empty route, there's there was one bridge that's a problem, it's the main river bridge uh, that's currently posted at eight tons. If you look at the top uh, site five, site six, site seven, there's a warning, there's two warning signs that say eight ton bridge ahead, there's another warning sign, eight ton bridge ahead, and then there's an eight ton sign at the, at the bridge. And what we're, what we're proposing here, and it's obviously up to you guys, is doing two things, utilizing a three truck posting versus one truck, and also uh, using op what we call operating rating as opposed to inventory rating. Basically, inventory rating is a factor of safety of over two, is what we post at. And that term inventory means you post this bridge at this rating, it's supposed to stay in your, in your inventory indefinitely. That's where the term comes from. Operating rating is you shrink the factor of safety down to 1.3, and you can operate that bridge at that rating, but it tends to wear it out quicker. So that's the terminology. Um, the state of Missouri, they post halfway in between those two numbers. In Kansas, for years, we posted inventory, but because of bad bridges, 
pay us Moon Creek and those postings up. Legally, each the owners, you guys, are allowed to post anywhere between those two numbers. It's entirely up to you guys. Uh, KDOT also recommends a three truck posting, which is the three silver trucks, because it, uh, it gives the public a little supposedly more confidence in uh, you know, smaller brick trucks with only one axle have to be less weight and the middle number is like a semi truck and then the third number is a, a double tractor trailer that it doesn't restrict the public as much as supposedly is supposed to give the public confidence more confidence in the signage so if you have a one truck sign then you have to use the most restricted weight out there and you're like most counties you kind of have a mishmash some Bridges, you've got the one truck, some you've got three truck. Uh, so, but anyway, in looking at this, uh, they're empty. I think their trucks are around 12 tons. And so, if you look, looking at those top three, if you use this, if you go to a silhouette sign of 7, 12, 13, it would make it legal to travel empty. And then, if you look at the bottom row, uh, there's four bridges. This is coming back uh, down Plummer. And there are a series of four bridges in there. And by bridge, some of these are boxes. But uh, if you look at just kind of working yourself right to left, if you look at site four, there's a bridge out there that currently has an 18 ton uh, sign, which actually for a single axle is the, is the limit. For, uh, but if you, if you go to oper operating rating, you don't need the tow set bridge at all, so you can remove that one. Site 3 is kind of similar, right? It now it has 152744, which is an inventory posting. If you allow it to go to operating, you don't have to post it either. Same as Site 2, from 18, it goes to no posting. The only one that's a big, bigger issue is Site 1. Is this? That's the bridge that's the uh, haul route for the cement plant. Ashford. Ashford. Yeah, Ashford. Yeah. And it's currently uh, posted 15, 20, 35. And so it sounds like, you know, we're try employing every tool we have in our toolbox. When you design a bridge, you normally have to design it for what they call impact loading, which is actually an extra 30% on your live load. If you're driving a truck at 55, 60 miles an hour, we have to add 30% of the weight for it smacking that bridge. So. If we lower the speed limit across this bridge to 20 miles an hour, that gets rid of that impact load. And so we could remove this posting. Now, I think what we're talking about is a temporary condition while 169 is closed, which I don't know, Mike, do you know what they're saying on the time frames? I can, I can kind of testify to that. Where we're at right now is in phase 1A, which is between 35th and Cherry. And then we'll go 1B, which will be the south component down to Earlton. The patching will reopen. And then we'll go to 2A and 2B. And what the state's done for us there is the reroute for us was 56 miles, which is huge. You can't believe how expensive the reroute is. So what the state did is stepped in and they're going to close the Humboldt Road Interchange down the plumber, which is 2.1 miles. That gets us on 169 over the river bridge. So we can come down to plumber, which is the north end of what Kenny is explaining. Then we come across the four bridges and we end up at plumber and 39. A westbound traffic can go to Wichita, or southbound traffic then can get back on, or they'll have to go east to, and come down past here, past Erie, to 47 to go back. And there's lots of different opportunities there. Um, we have asked Allen County for some help and in a similar similar condition, similar request. Uh, what they're gonna do is open Delaware Road for us in Allen County and let us get all the way to 59. We'll then come around south back to west, but 59 will come right past Erie. So we have a huge amount of traffic that has to go southwest to Arkansas. We have our Tulsa traffic, we have our Wichita traffic. What Kenny is playing, that, that's a little long-winded, but the key here is the 2.1 miles where we're completely blocked out and we have to go, everybody has to go around. Our input from the south, the plant has to go around. 
What the state did is offered, I believe, a $450,000 bonus to close that time frame, and the contractor currently is telling the state they think they can do it for in four point four weeks or four months in a week, and then that'll reopen. Well, once it reopens, then these detours become less significant. The, the reopening on that condition will use for however long it takes for them to rebuild that. And then you've got south and you've got north, and that's a whole nother, for a whole nother bailiwick. So the request here is for the period of time only that we have to use these detours. I bought a soccer the other day. As you said, they're open in Delaware Road east of the plant. They're going to try to open it east. The problem is there's like 39 box culverts. Well, you get that one low water bridge uh -huh. just and there's a low. You got a low water bridge right in there. But I, mean, I was just thinking route you down Harbor, Harbor, and then back around in the Chinook. I didn't. I didn't know that. What we kind of looked at there, Commissioner, is. We're trying to find a route that we can put our load on that is gonna be the most durable. I really am skitterish about running Delaware East or Harper South. I'd like for you to approve okay. that opening because Allen County is gonna open Harper Road for us down to where it meets you guys. But again, that's a relatively narrow county road and we'd rather use it on the inbound empty than on the outbound loaded. I'd really rather go this way because it's bigger, more durable. Kenny's looked at it intensively, and, and but only for the period of time we have to. And we're looking at route all the time because we don't know right now whether Emory Sapp is gonna go 2A or 2B after they do the interchange. So, this is gonna flex a little bit, and we'll, we'll continue to report to you all, because uh, it's your county and you're responsible for the road, but I just want you to know that, you know, we don't want the county, we, we, I ponied up, I don't think you were here, but, you know, I made a commitment to the county, just if I have to spend 100 grand, I will, um, and I intend to do that. So if, if it comes up, um, if we, a road gets torn up or something and might need help or, that's just kind of how Monarch functions. Yeah. So we're, we're not asking for anything we're not willing to help with. My, my main concern is that bridge. <laughs> That's going to be which one? Santa Fe. The Elk. The River, oh, the River, River Bridge. Bridge. Yeah. That, I mean, that, that ultimately is our major cost and safety. I mean, that. that well, and there, yeah. there's a certain amount of history associated yeah. with that, too. And I can promise you, Monarch doesn't want to be responsible for tearing up. <laughs> and I'm, I'm so. just worried about going down in the water. <laughs> so, I, I've, seen, I've seen loaded mixer trucks go across that bridge just recently. <laughs> well, <laughs> you don't got to worry about our 12 tons. Yeah, we just went through the uh, inspection <laughs> process when I was last on here. They made you a little nervous yeah. to go across that bridge. But I just I want to make sure that we're safe and we right. make this decision. And this, uh, well, the 71213 comes from KDOT's latest calculation for what I said operating rate. So you are legally allowed to operate that bridge. The highest you can operate it at is 71213. Do we work as a, some type of permitting process between Monarch and Astro, or as a, who's using that bridge as far as enforcement for other trucks going across that? I mean, is there I mean, the way we're setting it up is we you would just change the posting and, and the, the entire public is allowed to drive seven, twelve, thirteen, not just Monarch. Okay. Thirteen is twenty six thousand pounds, which is actually FET exempt. I mean, it's low enough. You don't even I don't, I don't even know if you get out of. Yeah, I mean, we're, I mean it, it's still actually what we're saying is seven. I think the thing is eight, I think it was a rounding issue, but it's still going to be if you're a single axle with this posting, you can only be seven tons. If you're a semi, you can be 12 tons, which is basically an empty truck. You're not going to be able to take any loaded. Now, usually, what brings bridges down is people violating the signage. So, whether we put this sign or a different sign or some other sign, you know, people are not following the rules. Uh, you know, uh, that could bring it down regardless. Right. Okay. Anything else? So I think at our last meeting we had the sheriff here. 
and his concerns. Mike, do you want to kind yeah, of? Yeah, it was uh, his concerns were the, the deputies are not going to have any way of knowing whether the trucks are loaded fully or, or empty. And uh, I did visit with Ken a little bit about that, and, and they have a, a commitment to well, sure at least the ones coming from their plant will be empty. And if you could comment, I'd appreciate that. Almost everything we own is GPS based. So what we own will know our subcontractors. They'll certainly be told and we'll certainly watch because right now we've been trying to designate route because we don't even want our subcontractors all tearing up something. I mean, I live in Neosho County and my wife and I don't, I'm probably more particular about this than you guys are just because I mean, I live here. So it, our stuff, I hate to say this, you're probably recording this, but if we catch people offending, they'll be terminated on our inbound where we're using contractors, etc. We certainly are taking this responsibility because I don't want that bridge to go down. I drive across it every day. My wife drives across it. So I, I realize this takes a certain amount of trust. You are welcome to verify. I understand what the sheriff's saying. So I don't think that, that we don't trust you and Monarch isn't going to do what you say. It's We've seen the traffic through Chinook in the last couple of weeks. Um, that's probably more of a concern. Yeah, I if don't... leave it I, open... I don't know what... I don't know... If, uh, well, one thing I would say is that the entire state system is signed with the Silhouette 3 trucks uh, from all the state highways. They don't use the single truck. That's one thing. The other thing I would say is People are going to violate the signage, and I don't care if it says eight tons or if it says seven, twelve, thirteen. They're going to violate it. So I don't know if that really helps you. Uh, well, tell, tell them we, we were out on a bridge inspection, standing on the east side of the road, on the north side of the bridge, and a loaded mixer truck crossed the bridge and about swept us all off our feet. Yeah. So un unfortunately, it's a common problem everywhere. It just people just. What you got is you got somebody trying to follow right. the law, right. and he doesn't want to, so he wants to try to get these signs changed so, so they're lawful, whereas there's probably a whole bunch of others out there that aren't in here asking, they're just doing it. Yeah. They want to get where they want to get as quick right. as they can. Yeah, and, and unfortunately sometimes, we have seen this in the past, where an overloaded truck will damage the bridge and not go down and then the next person sure. over. Always catching. Yeah, and that you know that that bridge has been there a long, long while. It was a it was a full full service heavy ton bridge at one point in time. It's it's old, yeah. and we want to protect it. Um, nobody, <laughs> I I certainly don't want that bridge to go down. So twelve tons, we think. We run an ultralight setup on our tractor trailers, which gets us into the 12, 12 ton range. And we're basically just gonna have to tell our people that if you are outside of 13, is it? Isn't that our? Well, 12, but it's 12. It's technically that center number is yeah. the center line. They'll just have to go another way. They'll have to go the long way. And I don't know, you know, you, you want an empty way this way and loaded that way. If they left that one at eight, can you go empty and load it on the other, on Plummer? It, it, what happens is the input is the converse of the output. When we have fuel coming in from Coffeeville, fuel is gonna come in loaded and have to go around, but they would come out of plant, go right down to get to Jerry. And if they're under 12, 12 or under, then they can cross it. Not then they have to take one of the other routes. Um, and those questions all are going to get asked. I mean, that's why I brought it up. That's, yeah, that's, that's, that's why I was kind of thinking about Delaware. If that would be an option. I know it's not the most convenient, but if they're coming, Allen County's going to let Delaware open, which they cracked down. Yeah. Delaware East, all the whole way to Ellsmore at one time, they should pretty much shut that down and rock it and put it on gravel. So, mm -hmm. as long as they're up, willing to work down there. 
county, we could probably open around the circle. And and how many counties said they would? Nine at least. So, how many counties said Del Delaware will certainly be in our our repertoire and our ability. And then if we can open Harper, um, you guys open your section. Allen County opens theirs. But right now we've been we've been pretty cautious about delivering routes to our truckers because we want to keep them specific and and closed and then when the next phase happens we'll move to the next route because again we have we have northbound which is a problem we have east we have southeast we have south and we have west so we've got to look at all of the routes and how much is going where because we don't want to, if, if the state would have just split the road and left us alive one of the other things we had mentioned was putting putting uh controls on that Elk Road Bridge, New River Bridge. And it was it just was too much. It's just one one side. Yeah, Kenny Kenny said on one side. Kenny said you just can't put 40 ton loads on that bridge, period. So so this this lightweight empty only was the best alternative. Really is those when you do come to it. Mm -hmm. We don't want to restrict your business or that road goes, but we have a six million dollar bridge that goes in the water. And Kenny knows what this Shaw Bridge happened when we just pushed on one pylon when we tore the deck off it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, that's a fracture critical bridge, which yeah. means one member goes, it goes. If, if you consider, Commissioner, the bridge's rating is. is is nose to tail with an eight ton load. And what is it, Kenny, that bridge 300 some feet? So if you put eight tons on there at multiple times both ways, which is full load, you don't typically see that. You get an upcharge on live load because of impact, but empty trucks spread as they are at 12 tons actually are going to weigh less than the three or four eight-ton vehicles that comprise that eight tons. So in the end, it's probably going to be full loaded of, with cars or Suburbans or pickup trucks with stuff in the back. It's going to be a bigger load bus than empty semis. Yeah. Bus. yeah. So I'm just trying to keep yeah, peace, I, peace I, yeah, of I, mind. I mean, in, in, in reality, I think we'll probably get... <laughs> Are we looking at restricting any, what, any speed on the Elk Bridge itself? No, just on the just on the plumber one. I think there's on. Uh, I mean, if, oh, if we're talking yeah, about plumber. weight, we're, yeah, on Elk, if we're on the bridge dropping the speed down, maybe. Well, take the problem is that's a kind of a wide open highway, and I was concerned about safety. If you try to lower the speed there, I don't know if people are really going to tend to do it. Over here on Plummer, you're our, there's a sign right at the bridge it's dropping into 40, 45, I mean, because it's coming right into town. So uh, that one, I don't feel too bad about. But I, I just, I'd hate to try to slow traffic down here to 20 mile an hour on that wide open highway. The next thing we're going to have is people getting rear ended. And there's some nowhere to go on that. Yeah, I mean, it's just. Yeah, they can back down that gravel road down there. <laughs> no, I know they don't slow down. I was up on that, I was up on that corner when they blew through the bridge going to the south in yeah. Allen County. As they hit all the stops that said close road. So the the you know, the numbers that we're showing, if people follow the signage, you'll be fine. The problem is some people don't follow the rules. So okay. You're coughing on that, right, Kenny? I mean, actually, the couch were done by the state. That's their op operating rating numbers. And you see the first number, I'm, I'm not exactly sure why they had it at eight. Because. We had a, I thought it was a nine when we did this. Well, it was. I think, no, I think it's closer to eight. Right it now. is now. It's yeah. kind of a rounding. The couch says seven point something. Okay. So I was saying if we're going to go to a three truck, let's drop it to seven for the single axle. Once you start spreading out the load, it's not as tough on the bridge. Basically, what that sign means is a seven-ton, a seven-ton single axle truck has the same effect on the bridge as a twelve-ton 
semi water right. spread out a lot more. Fought back. Yeah, yeah bridge, bridge, bridge back. Increases Basically, the surface area of the stretch down. Yeah. <laughs> so, anyway. Thank goodness it's only for a short period of time. <laughs> Two years is terrible long. You know, sometimes you guys, you know, try to post maybe down around the inventory or something maybe halfway between, but then somebody comes along and wants to move something, and so they issue them a pass to run it up to op operating rate. And then, and so that's kind of what we're saying here is do this for a few months at a higher rating, and then once it's open, go back. This is an option. Okay. Be ahead of this. And you could do a special inspection. I'm not sure. Yeah. That's a great idea. Yeah. And see if there's going to be any increased wear on the bridge, and if it is, then we'll probably have to <clears throat> kind of use an opening. We, we know you're going to own up to it, so you, you could put in a lot of time and effort in this. So. I might add <clears throat> the inspections on that bridge are very. Losing the whole bridge would be real expensive to everybody in concern. And if you want to point at six million, you could build a new bridge. I don't know how you're going to build it for six million. I hate to say that, but whatever. You know, Concrete steel just went down. Oh, that's right. Okay. <laughs> Steel's gone through the roof. Actually, prices have gone up the last few months. Have just yeah. 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 yeah, I think that might be expensive too. <laughs> Any other questions? What do we need to do if we act on this and just, I mean, we need to probably have a vote that we yeah, prove that we change the signage. Can we get a resolution on that then? Yeah. yeah on, on changing yeah. the signs. Do you want to throw Harper Road in there too? If they're going to have a resolution? <laughs> well, well, I'm just thinking, I think, think he did we're going to do it, let's do it comprehensively yeah. so that we're all above the board, we're all on the same page, and, and then if we're going to go back, because those are just little boxes down there on Harper. Well, I'm just thinking for you guys, your low water bridge is see some Delaware is going to be the main problem probably for you, and but you're not going to probably go east, you're probably going to turn down Harper, too. so let's try to get this all in one mm -hmm. shot. My concern on Harper Road would not be the structures themselves, but the road itself. Yeah. Other than that. Yeah. It's already got some pretty serious. And how many on. miles do we have of uh, Harper that's paved? Three and a half. Yeah, three four three miles. Three. Yeah, four yeah. miles. I, I might also just remind the commissioners that the state. Wayne was here, there is a, he called it a bucket of money, which I thought was funny. There is a bucket of money that they are willing to use when they do a total closure to help counties do a certain amount of repair. Now, of course, I'm not the state and I can't speak for the state. I'm only repeating what what we heard when he was here. It's, I don't know what a bucket of money is, but... I'd like to know. He doesn't know how big the bills are. <laughs> <laughs> did, he, did the state already make some sort of a deal with you guys and come up with a number? Or? They've made a commitment to help us on our unofficial detours as far as uh, <clears throat> materials and signage, uh, mag chloride for dust abatement. Kind of like we did on 39. Um, yeah. And then again, I mean, whatever I need, I. I made a commitment up front and I'll certainly honor that. So as we need that. Um, yeah, it's crazy. The 39 was the one you, you couldn't get this year. No, <laughs> Just I know. North, south, and east, west, both shut down. You, you, you have no idea. Crazy. It was it was good nice they opened it back. Yeah. It is open. Thank you. So we'll work on a resolution. I think we encompass Harper if we can. I hate to see the traffic on it because we went through that before. But right. We get to see the traffic <clears throat> off the highway, but we don't have a choice now. Yeah. Right. Yes. 
Sam or somebody sent me an email that this was a specific area list. Okay. But, uh, you know better than that. Do we, uh, <coughs> like as far as the, the inspection of the bridge and pretty much, how will we fund that? I'll put it I'm not, I mean, okay. that's part of it. Well, like I don't have a problem with that. That would probably be a ten thousand dollar inspection. You pay for half of it. Monarch pay for half of it. Well, we are going to have. When's the main inspection? We scheduled inspection on that bridge this summer. Okay, so the, like the fracture critical. Yeah. You're talking about. I mean, is it just between an inspection and a fracture right. critical inspection? Well, well, you have the state do that one. You, yeah, are you already in that snooper truck? Yeah, and, and they, they well, close the lane. Just let me know. Yeah. I'm in. Okay. So the, the, the problem will be getting skipped. I mean, is there another way to do it? Well, I mean, that's the best way. Sling and, you know, I mean, you can, but that's something that new. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
guys got to do a lot of listening. Huh? You guys got to do a lot of listening. <laughs> In tough decisions. Oh, come on, take a lot of thought. Uh, you know, it's not I always wrong. figure half of them are wrong. Yeah. Well, <laughs> how many times have you thought in your life, well, I should have done what I didn't think I should have done? You know, do the opposite of what you did. What are you doing, Henri? Man, I, I'm still with your son. <laughs> Don't blame my son. I will. For the young one, anyway. Like he's in, he's in uh, and they've got every Erie High School class picture in the back of them. So I found a very John. I was just where they wanted to take a picture. Better? I took yeah. it at him. He you still got the field behind? What? Yeah, so yeah. old. I got to go there and push on it. I thought it was yeah. funny. <laughs> Rick did not. I was going to look it up and get a picture. Yeah, there you told me what you guys were going to do, and I said, yeah. cool. Yeah. Well, I meant to do it last fall, and I still got two big legs of turnips for you. I just want to sell it all to turnips. And anybody want to turn up and say, what do you think about that, Dad? Go for it. My dad used to plant that whole field in sweet corn. Yeah. Did you have a coon trouble with that? Uh, not that you remember? Not that I remember. Yeah. I have to, though. He's way off you think. talking about there, that's why I'm asking. Yeah, we had a little issue come up um, about liability. Well, it wasn't, it wasn't liability, the, the fellow that had been, that we let do it, um, made a claim that he had a farm lease, and we had terminated that lease properly, uh, which is arguable. But uh, anyway, that, that has been terminated, and, and at the time, the board said, all right, we're not doing this. I'm not, hard to, I'm not hard to get along if you say no. yes and then say no. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs>
and then it'll just be a one time deal. But uh, so, yeah, I usually get two pins off of it. I've got to be pretty early in the session. I'd operate that as a one time per year. Yeah, I'll come back every year if yeah. that's what you would like. Just to do it that way. Yeah. Well, I think after the last. Um, incident that came up, I think we should do it under co contract or something. There has to be some kind of signature. It has to be in writing. We could do or I'm not going to be a comfortable very, with very simple uh, agreement, just so everybody's on the same page. Because, you know, what, what happened was all the commissioners that had, had made the agreement with this other fellow years ago, they're all gone. And, you know, it, it was just, it'd be nice to have something in, in writing. All right. That'd be fine to do then, but, and then you'll yeah. Come back and I do it every year. Address it every year. You know, I'm, I'm gonna get out there and not like it myself. We can draw something up and have something for next week, probably. Well, and you have to keep yes. in contact with me. Uh, sure. Right thing and if you, everybody else is okay, yeah, and we can take a motion on this. Now, there's a, a, just a little dab to the east of it, also, to the north end. Yes. A little elk shape deal there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, just do it all. Yeah. Yeah, that's, I that's don't think I'm going to walk in there. Mm -hmm. We have a legal or we probably have a legal or something kind of drawn up of the area or just in adjacent to the. Yeah, we can, we can get, I don't know if we need legal, but we can get close enough. Yes. Yeah. I'll make that motion. I got a gate. That was a joke. That was a joke. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Well, that's good news. Uh. So we are, with something like that, our mouths drop wide open. Yeah. Uh, that's my concern in previous meetings. I knew what was coming, so. Well, this is quite alarming. Um, I did call the IRS and I have that person's name and their badge number. So I was able to get the forms off the IRS forms. website. Mm -hmm. um, they said we need to do them and submit them as soon as possible. We can either mail or fax. That's our only option of turning them in. At that point, they will either accept or reject them. If they're accepted, we basically wait for further correspondence requesting payment as part of the penalty. This is as far not as a demand for payment. This is basically your final warning. If we do not respond yeah. by May 5th, then there would be a demand for payment. Notification. And it states that I'll put a warning and tell you that they will take the percentage of that no matter what, 20%. Mm -hmm. Whatever the total it will be 20% penalty. Well, the penalty $250 for each day of failure to file for both counts, and there's two separate ones. And that's that's Plus if you win penalty. the appeal. Yeah. That's if yes, you win the appeal, you deal. still won't pay them 20%. Yes. 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 
So I then called CIC to see what we could do about the 2017 and get them done. I got them here. They're done. I called IMA, who we deal with for health benefits, and they have a compliance team. I had a meeting with them today, and they went over the forms for the 1095Cs and the 1094C, which is the transmittal that goes along with these to send to the IRS. And we went through that together to make sure that I was filling that out correctly um, so that it can be submitted to the IRS. And then we wait. It's relatively a simple. Yeah, it's very simple it's process. It's pretty simple process. I mean, um, the hardest part for 17 is manually doing the 1094C. Right. Um, but for 2020 and 19, we can generate that through CIC, the forms and the 1094C. We confirmed that today, and we have those almost done too. So. so we're already two years, two and a half, three years behind, or three years behind. Yeah, and we've ignored all previous correspondence, is what's stated in this letter. And well, to be fair to that, we were able to go back into payrolls inbox there yeah. are correspondence that that was an acknowledgement that this was going on yes and that it was ignored mm -hmm. paper correspondence was it the email email mm -hmm. well, yeah. they'll send you the actual paper no not from the irs not from the irs from previous payroll oh. hr oh, okay. so where like basically making it seem impossible to get done and it's been this is the fourth day and then we have it done all but submitting and this was from a year over a year ago so we're still waiting on 2019 and 20. We've, yeah we've not seen any notice for 19 20s are late to be to be filed now, but um, they're still catching up to us on this. <laughs> yeah, We're back at 2017. Basically, there's a little bit more leeway with 2020 because of the circumstances with COVID and things of that nature. Right so that one's probably not as worrisome as long as we get it done. with the state of Kansas with any filings and reportings that were necessary. Um, the next quarter will be due the end of April. So the penalty uh, was paid. We were hoped to have the interest waived. We'd already used all those free cards. They were used up in 2020. So then we had to issue a check right back out for the interest. So yeah. they're paid in full. And so we have to draft that immediately upon. Uh, yeah. Yes. And we did, so it's taken care of. So basically a waiting game now on this to see where we stand. Um, unfortunately, that's the way it is. Um, and this is just pertaining to the 1095s. 1095s, yep. 1095s. Ones from 2020. It appears to be that um, the quarter that was due June 30th, September, and December are still yet to be filed. So we have all the paperwork. We found where it was all put together to some degree. I haven't verified. We haven't finalized to see if that's actually what was needed for that, but it appears as though it was put together in some format. But why it was never sent on or why they didn't receive it, or I don't, we don't know. Don't know yet. Gina has a contact that she's verifying that with, and then we will have the first quarter 941 for 2021 done. Yeah, they will be there. On time. Mm -hmm. So, there's that. <laughs> <laughs> and then we also need a non elected executive session. And I did have one. Um, 
request for you guys to look at and decide whether or not you want to sign off on it. Um, a transfer of sick leave balance to an employee of mine. Um, so I have an employee that has, is having some medical issues and she's been here six months so she has a little bit of sick time but not enough. And that was filled out by the person on the paper. She volunteered that. I did not ask. Session, move to the next session to discuss the job duties, performance of non elected personnel, protect the rights and privacy of individual employees for 15 minutes with the Commission, Seth, Sydney, and Heather. I'll second that. 10 2.
back in. Again, thank both of you for your work, and I know it's going to be endless for the next few months. I feel like it, so. Change is always hard, just like all the roads, all the detours. Everything has changed, and change is hard. We're actually doing very well. We're making progress. Yes. so that's done for the year um, we had one deficiency on it but it was just because the uh, contractors weren't that far yet we just had, had an e-scout down there where we can push that e-scout and shut the boilers off they got that done today yesterday and I sent pictures of it to the state and they said they will remove the deficiency so the boiler inspection is good uh, PM came by today um, Paul Brandon Stewart, I think is how you pronounce his last name, and David Dacus, and then uh, John Scanlon, they came by and they did a walkthrough and kind of started a little punch list on for the electricians, you know, what they need to finish up, and just kind of saw where everybody was at, and it sounded like they were very pleased. I'm, I'm thinking it's going to be about another couple of weeks before they're complete down there. Um, hopefully, these, we got trials starting. Friday and it goes for two weeks. Oh, we got two of them that'll go for two weeks total in the courtroom here. So they're trying to get done a bunch of done before that happens so that that doesn't hinder them. Uh, doing a chiller startup tomorrow, so we'll start getting some cool air in the building hopefully. Uh, Dyke will be here, I believe, and they're gonna kind of start fine tuning all the pumps and the chillers ready to go. Um, the other guys are finishing the water loop in the basement, the chill water loop. I think they got across the hall today and they're looping down this side. So really all that's left for them is come back and tie in the units that they, the tank holes that they have passed and then insulate the pipe. So they're looking like they're going to be done pretty quick. I mean, just depending on what they run into up there. Um, the control guys, they're working on getting the thermostat still hooked up. We're running into some issues with some of these being too loud, which I'm working on that, trying to figure out if we can... We'll be switching them to a lower fan speed in the rooms that people may be complaining about it in, but uh, PM's also looking into it possibly. <laughs> Yeah. You back at me. <laughs> yes, they're very loud. It's a, yes, it's she a, did. Hers is pretty loud. Thing, I've actually got that one shut off today because it came on one meeting a couple weeks ago and I couldn't even hear you guys on, on the screen because it was loud. So I got it shut off today. But uh, we're going to try to add some controls to that where it will pick the fan speed based on the demand of the thermostat, I believe, the way we were talking about. So it won't just be a high, medium, or low. It'll be, it'll be able to choose whatever's needed. So as far as that goes, um, yeah. like I said, these guys probably have another week and a half or so on the, just the control side of it. And we'll just start wrapping up. I haven't talked really about training yet when we're going to start that, but the closer we the closer they get done, I'm sure we'll start talking more about it. Uh, any questions on that, first off? Okay. Okay. 
about the lighting. Oh yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh, the lighting that electricians are installing them as we speak. They got the right ones in, and they should finish that up tomorrow. And they're gonna start moving their stuff out of here Thursday. Uh, one thing I did want to tell you guys on that. I talked to Tom, which is the the main electrician here. Uh, this barn back here, the sheet metal building. I don't know how long it's been here, but it's been wired up and electricity has been ran to the meter this whole time, but it's never been hooked up, so there's no power in that barn. And I talked to Tom today. I said, separate from all this, I would like to see if we could get you guys to go ahead and hook that up for me. I have to get the city involved so they can pull the meter. I uh, got with lawyers for 911 to make sure the generator fires up and everything. And so we can get that barn hooked up so I can start using it for more than just storage. <laughs> and Tom told me that because everything's been going so well here, he is, if we supply the parts, they're, they're gonna do it free of charge for us. It won't be but about 15, 20, 30 minute job at the most, but he said, because everything's gone so great with everybody helping out and not, you know, they said it's been a great job to work for us. So he said he'd just do it free of charge. So, so yeah, I thought that was already hooked up. I knew it was wired. Yeah. Yeah. It's wired, there's light switches, there's lights, there's precepts, everything. It's a mushroom building. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it just popped up out there one time. <laughs> I don't know how old it is. I can't get anybody. Somebody told me seven years. Somebody told me four years. I don't, I don't know. No, it's old. It's, it's probably yeah. ten. Yeah, yeah. It's it's ten. Well, it would it's certainly be nice. Huh? If, it's during your time, then. <laughs> it would be nice to have power out there. Is there a reason? <laughs> <laughs> Was it electricity? Well, I think it may have been the head road bridge over here. We built that building with them, if I can remember correctly. I, it's Mike's fault. No, it was, it was before <laughs> yeah, Mike's predecessor. <laughs> yeah, I've heard a lot of different time frames on it. So, but like I said, I would like to get it done just because it would be nice to. Uh, I've bought some stuff. I'm building wood yeah. projects here and there. I've got a saw and stuff now, so it'd be nice to do all of it out there instead of in the basement. Mm -hmm. So, now, Dave, we came down and trenched that electrical in probably. Oh, because there's no disconnect for one uh, to actually shut off the no service. It's, it's, you, you only have to pull the meter. That's the only way they can do it. So I got to get the city involved in that. And then people are worried that there's going to be back feeds on the generator going back out there, but the transfer switch doesn't work like that. There won't be any back feeds. So, but I did just want to bring that up and that they were going to do that free of charge. I know it ain't much, but, but they did comment on how good it's been to work here and how great everybody's been. It needs to be done. They're willing to do it for nothing if I get parts for them. So I'm going to do that tomorrow. Uh, next, I was going to talk to you guys about the, the roof situation for the extension office. I did get some pictures that I wanted to give you guys. I just kind of show you what the roof actually looks like up there so you don't so you believe what I'm saying. <laughs> um, but the question I did have was, does this need to go out for sealed bids or is this something I can get some quotes on from some companies? I've got some quotes, but if it needs to be sealed bids, then I'll just trash these and we'll have them send you guys sealed bids. Mm -hmm. well, we need to get specs on what we'll want to go, what if we're going just a regular new rubberite roof or right. same um, scene like the rest of the buildings and match. Mm -hmm. Get quotes on and this. Well, our actual bid on I emailed you guys yeah, it's on that quote from Mailer, but if they need to go out for sealed bids, then we'll just nick that and, and whatever. I mean, be Some of the other options we did have, and I got this from a company that came and talked to me is, I've only got one, it's a silicone rubber that they can spray on top of the existing roof. They'll sweep up all that bitumen that's on there, prep the roof, 
then I'll just come back in and spray the silicone back on top of it. And there's several companies that are starting to do this now. So if you want it to match the courthouse, then that won't matter. But if you, yeah, that comes with 10 to 20 year warranties on that silicone. So if, if we're gonna put it out for bed, we'll have to decide. I think it's in that picture. We'll have to decide, you know, how we want to do it, if we want this or if we want the metal roof. It's not a big fan of flat roof, so. Um, this is supposed to be yeah. the greatest thing for flat roof <laughs> since they started making them, but. If, if that's the case, then. The I'll price difference is pardon? quite large. The price difference is quite yes. large. Yeah. So, um, do we want to invest that, I guess, in the building? Is What's the life expectancy of standing seam? Probably 40, 50 years. I think the standing seam is 50 years 50 year from regulars most of the time. And like I said, this stuff is 20 years, but it's about a quarter of the cost. I mean, we're talking under $10,000 for this stuff. So mm -hmm. there's a big difference there. So just be whatever you guys decide. Like I said, right now there is some leaks on that. I, I just can't find them. There's pinholes in different places and there's drains on there and in the pictures that, uh, yeah, there's drains there. There's one on each end and one of them is, has got a leak under it somewhere. So it's coming from somewhere around the building because I have tried to seal up one of them drains where I thought it was coming from, but I can't find a, find a pinhole in it. So. If we want to do sealed beds or we want to do the standing seam, I prefer it. But okay. we want our buildings to stay good. The roof is probably the most important thing you're going to ever put on one. Okay. That works. I'll see. I don't know how to do that, but I'll, I'll give it to some yeah. people and we'll get it done. That's yeah. <laughs> why we're real specific on how we set that up. We'll set up the other yeah, bed. Specs, yeah, specs specs for you. Real important, right? And make sure that the carryover bond issues is finished, job completion, insurance work comp, all that has to be in. Gotcha. All right, uh, next we're going up the lawnmower again. I need one. Uh, okay. Uh, <laughs> I recommend you go to Walmart and get a push mower. Yeah, <laughs> if that's what it takes. If that's what it takes, I'm. I'll get it done. Um, I got bids from LDI in Chinook for a Hustler. There's two bids on there for them. One's a little higher quality than the other. And then their existing bid from last year for the X marks is still good. But Doug Kabir and the salesman I've been talking to, he was saying that one of the models was going to be hard to get because they're COVID stuff, so. But uh, there's one on there, the, the top page is, oh, it's the one that I think that would work best. I was trying to get a rear discharge, but they don't make them anymore in the Hustlers, and with x -Mark, they only do it in a 60 inch and bigger, and I can't get a 60 inch around this building anywhere, so the rear discharge is out. They had one left over at LDI, and they sold it about a week before I called them to get these quotes. Um, the second page is supposedly the, it's a higher end residential mower, got a four year, 400 hour uh, warranty on it. And the first page is uh, like the first of the commercial line. So it's a lower end commercial mower, a little bit bigger motor. Well, on the quote it's not, 
in the book that shows it was, but but it has a four year thousand hour warranty on it. And then the X mark is pretty much only limited to that one option and that was the LZE model for eighty four hundred. That's for a five year twenty fifty hour. The old mower last week it took me about three times as long as it should have to mow, and I'm getting ready to need it again. And if I do it, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna need to put a little bit of money into it so just to get the job done, unless we decide on one of these. <coughs> Before 2013, I know it's got almost 2,000 hours on it. I think it's even before I was yeah. first on this mission. It bought us many <laughs> right before. Right. So, like I said, of all the ones that I've looked at, I don't have any of the new catalogs, but I do have some catalogs if you want to see them from last year. But. Uh, the top page there is the one that I would recommend. I don't know I'm if it's any better. differences on, on the bid. Mm -hmm. like Besides just the warranty and the well, the model number of it, or not? Yeah, uh, it's going to be like how heavy the frame and stuff is made. Like, like I say, and that is all the yeah. One of them may have a little more you know, for commercial, a little bit bigger frame for commercial mower than it would be for residential or heavier duty parts. SDX. There's the only difference in the whole yeah. thing. Okay. SDX <coughs> makes it the commercial part of it. Courthouse now? Or equipment oh, reserve? Equipment reserve. Equipment reserve. I think if we're going to invest, we should get, get a good one. Then. Mm -hmm. Well, and how much time it'll save you. Yeah. Uh, this tomorrow might cut into the hourly rate a little bit. It might, might be. I'm sure we could all split it. I mean, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we just take shifts. I'll move that we accept the quote from LDI for a mower. Is there a quote number 1920 for 2021 Hustler? Uh, fast Track SDX. For six thousand seven hundred forty-eight eighty-five to be taken out of the equipment reserve for the maintenance department. I'll second it. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion passes three zero. Thank you. And last is the landscaping out here. I had a girl that was supposed to go come and spend some community service she didn't show up last Friday but she called me Monday morning and said she forgot she didn't have she forgot she had school so I don't know if they're supposed to be off or something but she is going to come back in but regardless of her being here or not I'm going to get started on that this week I've got some gravel mulch from Tony's I'll get and get put in there and I'll get them all cleaned up so I'm going to start on it this week so I think the center one we want to do landscaping, and I think on the side ones, are we just going to take them back to grass? I would prefer if we at least did the center one and then one over by the wheelchair ramp, if we can do it okay. to the gravel, just because it's going to be hard to get in there to mow with anything uh, okay. besides we do. And then if you want to do the 
the south end back to the grass would pretty far be that. Mm -hmm. Just make it simple. Mm -hmm. so so you get this random mower, you need a lot of grass to yeah. board, so. Yeah. <laughs> 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 it just needs to be done. Yes, and like I said, I do have plans on getting started on that this week. So, so if the pinwheels need to be pulled, like I said. They gotta be put back to you, don't they? Wouldn't they want to go for the whole month? Well, you're talking about community service. I think the uh, the college has offered up some athletes and they've helped in the city of Chinook. That's true. So with the community college, maybe it would be something to see if they have strong athletic college basketball players, wrestling players, baseball players that might have community service because they have long hours that they have to compete. That would be might great. need somebody to access some young help. They did a big job for the uh, city library, I think, last weekend. The, yeah, the museum and the library. So it might be a, some of the contact. Definitely do contact there. Also, they look into that. Yeah, that might, yeah, they are now doing different projects mm -hmm. so and it's something that needs to be done in a day if you have several people right happy. yeah okay i'll definitely look into that so. might be another op option for some of the service community service help you <laughs> they bring sure they usually bring a crew so they're yeah mm -hmm. doesn't take long to do it free labor is a good thing mm -hmm. <laughs> 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 right, that's all i got any questions Thank you. Have a good day. Mike, you're up now. Okay. Good afternoon, everyone. Come in. I'll make this as short as possible. Um, last week I met with uh, Eric Alders. He's with IEA regarding the ditch cleaning. I talked to Jason yesterday and he's yeah. like, man, Mike picked some doozies. <laughs> but we promised that we would do whatever you guys yeah. had done. So they were a little surprised, but good job. Well, I don't think people understand what an undertaking that ditch cleaning is, and we are so far behind on it because sometime in the past they wore out that old rock and sold it and never replaced it. And so now we're paying the consequences. But they'll do a good job. Yeah, well, it was wore out is what I was told. <laughs> and the new ones are they're very expensive. Uh, probably two hundred fifty, three hundred thousand for the smallest one. So, anyway, that's on my list to have them removed. We have it. Uh, I, I emailed you some requests of the use of county roads by ESS. Now I talked to uh, the guy about that and uh, told him that some of those roads were already restricted for truck use. And uh, so he, he went back to the drawing board and I think all they're gonna ask for is maybe the North Plumber And, and also, when all this was going on, 39 was still closed, so that would change things, too. That, that was a huge help to have that back open. It was my understanding that it wasn't going to be open until this coming Thursday, the 15th, is what I was told. But uh, it was a pleasant surprise when they opened it up yesterday. Is he aware of that change? Do you know? Or? I'm sure he is. Okay. I, I'll notify him. Yeah, the same He's sure. in close contact with, with KDOT. I will definitely make sure he's aware of that. Uh, we
we didn't know that until fairly late in the day yesterday. So, uh, just a reminder, we'll open up the chip and shield bids, oil bids, uh, next meeting, and it'll be on the 27th. Uh, cleanup week is, is coming uh, April 27th. We'll be advertising that. What was the dates on that, Mike? April 27th through May the 1st. We did have a, uh, a visit from MSHA Corey today. Uh, Chris just texted me just right before I got up here and said we had one violation. I don't know what it is yet, but uh, that's not bad. They're gonna, when they show it's up. It's always we'll, something. Oh yeah, they, they've got a rule book about that thick and, and they, it's extremely rare that they don't find One other thing, I know this is late notice, but I, Samantha, she found out there's some grant uh, writing training at the Kansas City, and this is coming up this Thursday and Friday. And uh, if you're okay with that, I would like to send her up there to be a part of that. $425. I think grant writing is great. Oh, I think you just need to get training. And uh, I'm glad that she's interested. And I see our other departments that have some training, like Melanie and, and Lori and Teresa, and how they benefit from having that training. and. I think there's a lot upcoming grants that are going to come open uh, with all this new money coming in, and so I think it's a great idea. Kansas City, Kansas Community College. That's that's where it's being held at. They're mm -hmm. not sponsoring it. That's yes. the location that we have. Okay. There's a motion. Oh, I need details. I need a motion. If you want to sign it, I'll make a motion that we approve the training education request for Samantha Ekman for uh, April 15th and April 16th for the Grant Writing USA class at um, Kansas City, Kansas Community College. Second. I'll second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion passed through there. Usually that pays for one grant that she can get, so. Did you get that uh, email from Kathy Scrums, I believe, so? Yes. On 120? Yeah. I, I went out there and looked at that before the meeting. That's why I was just a little bit late. But uh, that needs to be addressed. There was some big drop-offs over there. We need to at least get some hazard signs or something up for now. And you can go out and look at it. 
Yeah, I looked at it. I mean, it's, Did you? Uh, it, it, it needs some markers there. But, mm -hmm. uh, that's really about all we can do with it, is put some markers up, because it's been that way for what? Forever. Yeah. It's, there's a culvert that's a pretty, pretty deep culvert, and along the edge of the road, if, if, if you went off the edge, you, you're in trouble. The, the delineators, the, the signage is all gone. Long gone. gone. Yeah. So we need to get some some new ones up there. Yeah. But, uh, you might get in contact with her. And uh, when I looked at it, it looks like the only thing you can do is put a longer culvert in there. It may be able to be extended a little bit mm -hmm. and help the process. And uh, I think towards their ground, you know, you might be able to work with her to. A small shot rod or something in there and kind of build that up. Yeah. Yeah, you get with her. I appreciate that. And uh, I got Wallace Road north of 47. It's pretty rough. I drove it down the other day. Okay. It's by Rick Smith's there. talked to Jason about that and uh, I had a couple of complaints yesterday that was one of them there and also 140 of where they installed a couple more there were three of those big round culverts he said it was pretty rough there I haven't looked at it but, uh, I will but uh, I did send Jason an email regarding it and also I had a complaint on uh, Lions Road uh, South 47 so uh, yeah I'm nervous they done a nice job in the work they did, but they may have forgot to finish. Yeah, it's the, he said it's not done, and a lot of the debris is coming through on it. Yeah. That, it, they opened up that culvert, so now it's all pulling through, and it's bringing all the debris they, over on it. They need space. to do it. Of course, they'll probably have to, well, I don't know how that works, really. The, most of the work, I mean, there's, there's some work that needs to be done on the county right away, but really to fix it right. Because anything past the right away. county right away, that would be a nice gesture for them to do that, but they're not responsible for, right. for anything past the county right away. So we get into a lot of problems with that. Because a lot many times we have problems, you know, with our culverts and what have you, right within the county right away, but the real problem is outside the county right away, and we can't just go out there and start opening up sloughs on private property. I wish we could, but we can't. I think it's more the debris coming from a neighbor across the mount passing through. And that's, yeah. So, but I'll, I'll look at it and yeah. see what we can do. So, and, so on and, the wind farm, um, so have you heard from Cooper and Michael on the inspections at all? They are supposed to be working on the uh, structures. structures, and uh, I meant to call Tanner today, but I just didn't have the time. So, so. so my understanding is you will receive the report first. Okay. Go ahead. Okay. Yeah. And that will then be forwarded to us, I'm assuming, or... Anyway, by our next meeting, we should have yeah. a report out as to what's going to need to be done. It was my understanding that they were going to be probably done with the structures this week. Okay. So, so Jason yeah. said they have two more turbines to finish, and then they should be done as far as that. And so they're starting, yeah, they'll be ready to start looking at the structures and doing the roads and, yeah. and finishing up. They did uh, start rocking uh, Chase Road there, north of 47, this week. I was glad to see that. I was hoping they would do it last week, but I, I know that they have cut, uh, the, the contractors cut their staff significantly. And uh, so that leaves them a little bit shorthanded. Uh, but they, they, I don't know where they're at right now, but we lack about, uh, I don't know, I think there's three miles left. So 
So then Jason also said I had asked him last time about um, their status system or you know being able to tour exactly what they have, and so he's trying to set up a meeting. He was thinking in the next week uh, for us as a commission to go down and actually probably go through the O&M building and then wherever they have some of their other stuff so that we can kind of meet uh, the people at Liberty and kind of see their setup and kind of, you know, how they're uh, monitoring things. So I don't know what kind of notice he's going to give us, but I just want everyone to be aware of that. I think that'll be a good a good move to see exactly what is down there. So he was trying to set that up. So on that note about dust abatement, are we offering the citizens of Neosho County for dust abatement from a that contractor? No, we don't. The county has nothing to do with that. If someone calls in, we put them in contact with with that Scotland company. Industries and and then they call them and make the arrangements, and, and that way we're we're out of the loop. Okay. Well, I had, I, had, I had a lady call me up. I don't know if she got hold of your office or not, but she was wondering about that. Yeah, and then we usually get a list from Scotland Industries, and we prep the road, and then ahead of them come to apply the, the product. Do we need to put that out on the website, and paper, or something to let people know that they're Well, I would think that would be up to the company to sell, but since we're no longer, mm -hmm. the county hasn't provided dust abatement for a good number of years. And I would really rather leave that between that company and the citizens. Okay. You don't want to start putting a logo? <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. Ask Mr. Tripper about oil. <laughs> I think this, this is a pretty good setup, really. I mean, they get a hold of the Scotland Industries. They say it's X amount of dollars per foot with a minimum, I don't know what the minimum is, three or 400 foot. And uh, then it's all between the, the individual and, and that company, and then we just leave the county out of it. Yeah, well, we do your dressing up for them. Yeah, we do. <laughs> we, we, we try to prep the road. And then after they spray it, we don't grade it unless sometimes it gets so bad we have to grade it. Awful. And it really doesn't hurt it. If you do it right, it doesn't hurt it. But you got to be careful because if you're if you're not, you'll be bringing dragging rock that's not treated over to the area that is right. treated, and yes, mm -hmm. it will. Then they're going to be having dusty conditions. It, it does last. It lasts pretty good. Quite a few years. Several years. I know a lady that over there uh, it's on Rooks, I believe, that uh, it, you can tell it. And I don't know if she's had it done for years. It's, it, it's, it works. Mm -hmm. it, it doesn't does. eliminate it 100%, but it will. Probably 90%. Hey, Mike, can you text me that? Company's name and the number. Sure. In case somebody calls me up. Yep. Okay. Thanks. So, are you going to be around for when we talk about noxious weeds? I know that's not under your department, but. Sure. I'll stick around. You might have some questions for you. Yeah. Yeah. I've, get, I've gotten a lot of calls of people address, I guess. that uh, are requesting noxious weed vouchers, which I told the girls. See in the past, even though the Noxious Weed Department was not under the road bridge, haven't been for years, but we would help out and we'll continue to help any way we can in that just uh, issuing the, the vouchers. Not, not that big of a deal, but uh, you said I, limits and everything on that. Um, that's another thing we need to talk about because in the past we haven't, but I think that we probably should because I know that chemicals, along with everything else, has went up quite a bit. I think, I think we do. Now we didn't know. No, we when, I, when I say, let me back up a little bit. Okay, maybe we should wait until we've got department heads okay. waiting. <laughs> Sorry, me, I brought this subject yeah. up, but 
I think there is some discussion that needs to be had before. We have limits on the quantity per individual. We may want to also take a look at uh, a limit as a whole, like the record. We're going to issue twenty thousand dollars worth, and that's it. Or, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm not only... okay. I'm Speak up. I, I was like, wait, we know. <laughs> I skipped over. I'm sorry. I'm... <laughs> Don't mess with Melanie. Yeah, I know. You can see where you stand. I know. Right? <laughs> like, right you need a big flag. You need to scoot down so I can see you up there. <laughs> no, I do usually, but I think there was somebody in my spot. Yeah. Okay, so we're doing spark grass up. Oh, the first my. part. Oh, thank goodness. The first part is a letter from the city of from the Erie Public Library. She couldn't make it because she had a commission meeting in Carroll for tonight. So um, she wanted to thank you, kind of give you an update. If you look on the second page on that little, I didn't get a chance to stay for one. But uh, there's pictures of the greenhouse um, with her tomato plants and other assorted things that she's planted over this time. And uh, she just wanted to thank you guys and kind of give you an update as to what's going on. And to invite you um, to come see it. When is she usually there? I've tried a couple she of times. Usually but there. I really wanted to um, meet your Well, mom. her the hours of operations eight to noon, and then one to five thirty. But she's generally there all day Wednesday, and usually in the morning time. So okay, I'm gonna catch her one of these times. Yeah, she loves to show. Shows with everybody. Speaking from experience, she shows with everybody. Um, so she wanted to thank you. Uh, they have uh, planted nearly 800 tomato plants. Oh, wow. Um, she also got spinach and lettuce and onions and something called tapso. Um, she's planning on doing an exchange for uh, vegetables. I believe it was April 24th. And she didn't put in here, but um, she's doing a plant exchange too. So she's going to give out plants to people and people bring in stuff. And so um, I believe it's the 24th. Then she does have a wee share table and she also has a refrigerator in there for anything that people bring in. I think last year she had quite a lot of zucchini and that sort of thing people brought in. So, um, but she wanted to thank you and kind of give you an update of all of that fun stuff. So if you get a chance, yes, go over, she'll show it to you. Um, your second part of your, is the spark wrap up. There's actually two parts of that. Um, you're currently in the fund. Sorry, it's. 14,000 pages. I try to slim it down a little bit because the report that we submit to the state is like, if you print it out, it's like 37 pages for one of them. So I try to squish them all together. And so there's $477.74 and unreconciled funds. We had an issue where there was funds that weren't transferred at some point. So Sydney took care of that. Um, we also got $379.07 back from Spill. Um, because they didn't spend it all on their HVAC. Oh, that's so nice. They send, well, we tried to get them to do other things with it so they didn't have to send it back, <laughs> but they sent it back. So it was $379. So, um, And it's kind of a breakdown of the stuff that we spent as far as on the county level, um, which was $1,826,625.57. Which ranges from everything for the HVAC for here the HVAC for the jail, or the air purification for the jail, um, to the sneak crews for um, the treasurer's office, the furniture for the clerk's office, to hazard pay, payroll reimbursement, computers, you name it, we did it with it. And then the last section on that is the, what we reimbursed to the cities, and, and then the final part of that, this package here is your uh, split outs of each of the grant programs that we did. Household relief, response and recovery, and operational. So I went through and kind of split out the items that we purchased or that was purchased with the grant money for the individual businesses, whether it be HVAC or computers or books or 
air purifications, floor cleaners. We did a lot of HVAC systems or HVAC purification systems. Um, I didn't put the schools on there because obviously they, they don't have to account for what they do. But a lot of uh, computer equipment, the food expenses, also the for um, First Baptist Church. Everybody has all of their receipts in and accounted for. And then the first one is the HHR, so you kind of have some idea of, I didn't put the people's names, I just left their numbers on there, but you can see that for the household relief, we did 77 awards at an average award of $18,038.56. So it came out pretty good. And same thing with the um, response and recovery grant. And we awarded out of five hundred thirty-six thousand twenty dollars and thirty-one cents on the response. I'm sorry, in the agency operational, we um, awarded three hundred forty-four thousand six hundred eighty-one dollars in working capital to the small businesses in the county. So you know, something a little too cute to your own here. So, um, so just something by reading. Did you <laughs> sleep at night? <laughs> I don't know. It's it, very detailed, but if there's any questions when you get home and you go, oh, what's this? Um, so you have the kind of the proof in the Zimba pudding. Um, and then on the last piece of your little piece there is your new stuff you get to make decisions for at some point. Um, obviously, the American Rescue Plan passed. Um, I think National Association of Counties estimates we're going to get three point or three million one hundred four thousand four hundred fifty nine dollars which we won't give it all this year, we'll get half of it this year. Mm -hmm. um, none of the uh, Treasury Department's um, FAQs have come out as to guidance as to what you're going to spend it on in stone, so. Um, I think um, Thursday they're going to make the announcement. Yeah, I was. Um, there's um, NACO, there's a Zoom at 1 o'clock that you can sign up for, and they're going to, I guess, announce the whole I hope so. I had watched the one last week where they talked to the guy with the treasury. And <laughs> it was not really really, informative. No, it wasn't nearly so, as informative. This one sounds like they actually have details. Yes, I believe so. And, and what they kind of, and this is from NACO's website, um, that it's kind of just like pretty much somewhat of the same thing, but there's also involves um, the revenue part too. So there's something to do with lost revenue being being covered as well by it, not just, hey, you have to do whatever X, Y, and Z with it. And you also have, um, well, three years to spend it. It's not six months, so I believe it's December 31st. But you'll get the first half before June of this year, and then the second half next June. That'll be another fun decision as to where you're at. Let me see. So that's kind of an update as far as that goes. But the spark, I believe we're done. Uh, the money that's left in there will just be paid for audit when we get the audit part. And um, that's I mean, they allow us so much money for audit anyway through spark. So whatever's left in there, which is not a whole lot of money, that money is available for paying for part of that. And I think I'd ask Heather about the audit, so I don't have an answer on that. Any questions about any of this fun stuff? Yay. Thank you again. It became much larger than what any of us anticipated. I think, for sure. it, I think um, this certainly would be something that um, I think as a county we could handle to do the next tranche. The reason I say that is because um, why spend it for administrative elsewhere when we could do it? If you're Unless you're going to do grant programs. I mean, obviously you guys have to make the decision as to what you want to spend the money on. But uh, I think if any county we could handle it, do that. I don't see why spending more change money someplace else. But that's my opinion. I mean, there's enough guidance out there and questions that you can ask that I just wouldn't see spending. But then again, you know, we'll just see. So the only other thing I have is I need one of my vacation requests approved for the 23rd. I didn't get it on the consent agenda. So. I didn't want to make Heather have to redo her agenda. <laughs> You're welcome. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> but that won't have to happen to me for a while. It's 
for April the 23rd, 23rd. It's Monday and Friday. Friday and Monday. I'll move that we approve the leave request form for Mellon and Kemp Culp um, for two days in April as presented. I'll second the motion. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion passes through Joe. Enjoy your time. I will when I know. Where are you going? Dubai. <laughs> Don't tell anybody. <laughs> Don't tell anybody. She got part of the grant money, so. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Probably leaving the country, Nick. <laughs> well, we're going to Dubai. I think three times. Thank you. You're welcome. All right, Bob. Sorry. Now it's your turn. extension on NRP. Uh, they are um, they want six months. They just got to finish up interior work, uh, tram, cabinets, doors. So I won't be voting on it. <laughs> Do you want to make a motion? Yes. I'll make a motion to have a six month extension for the property at 110502 20th Road, Chinook, Kansas. Uh, presented by Mr. McElroy. I'll second that. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Two approval, one abstention. Well, okay, that's right. for uh, Michael Beachman. Uh, he's going to build a house and an ag building. Ag building but not under the NRP program. Uh, I think the NRP is commercial and residential. Is that right across from Max there? Um, yeah, I think Max is Good motion. All those in favor? Aye. 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 I like all the new construction. Blowhorn to get them to understand what this was about. Well, he's been in the program before. He built that shop building across from the convenience store. So it's not his first time. Okay. And then uh, after. 
cash flow. We have agreed on a value. Uh, here's the commission's copy of the appraisal. We stipulate to a value of $50,247,730. Uh, the appraisal was closed. Okay. And they were all right using the yes. same appraisal. Okay. Yeah, well, we had a we had a meeting ahead of before we did it, and we both agreed to the same appraiser should be the same. They gave us a list of the assets that were valued in the last one, and then we sent that to him. And, uh, then when it came back, we had another meeting. Uh, went over everything in it, so everybody was in agreement with it. There was Mike uh, Mead was there, and their lawyer uh, was there, and one of the owners from Ireland was there mm -hmm. on the Zoom meeting. So it was uh, pretty short, but pretty uh, pretty good meeting. Good. The, uh, I got the bill, you'll get it in your next stack. It's a lot less than the last one. <laughs> what? <laughs> so, but the stipulation is, was for, well, we'll have to re, we're going to have to, uh, we've agreed to redo it in 23 for the 24 values. So about every four years, we'll go through this same whole thing again and see where we're at. So, uh, this value, and there's a, a little issue, um, is for 19, 20, and 21 so far. So 22, 23 will be included, and then we'll have a new one for 24. Uh, the 19 value, the um, they said they sent in a payment under protest. Treasurer said she didn't receive it, and I believe she did. But when I contacted the board, and ask them about what, what we can do about it. Uh, because either way, if I say, no, you can't have the hearing, I still have to send them a letter. The letter still allows them to appeal to the board. So I went ahead and contacted the board, asked them about what I need to do on this. They said, well, just go ahead and hold the hearing, do a note change, and send it up to the board. And then let the board decide whether the hearing should have been held. Because the documentation that was sent to me indicated that it should have been mailed and it should have been received, but we all know how the post office is. So, and it was sent in two separate <laughs> folders, but at the same time. So, sorry. Astro wrote a check, put it in a folder or in a mailer. He put the uh, payment of protest in a folder in a mailer, and then they mailed them together. So. So I got copies of everything, so, but like I said, they said to let the board decide, the board may decide that no, they couldn't have the hearing and then we're just done. Or they may say yes, and we'll just stipulate to the same value and we'll go from there. So that, uh, if that was paid under protest, will there be a payment back if the value came down? Yeah. What, what amount are we looking at? Well, for, nine, for 20, the county's looking at 208, 524. Somewhere right around there. And with the mill levy being a little less in 19 than it was in 20, uh, so it'll be a little less than that. So it's like $400,000. Mm -hmm. So you have, what, 258 sets aside? I believe, I don't know. Something like that. Sorry, what was the number again? 208? 208, 524.
the uh, board is making exceptions for COVID. So, and the second half is half the protested. So that was in May of 20. As I said, they're making exceptions. So, I thought this was done. <laughs> Welcome back. It is at the end of the day. Don't sound like a meeting. That is the worst. Bad enough. First time we blew over eighty-one thousand dollars just for the paper, and then there was the lawyer fees. I don't know what those were. Uh, a lot. Cool. I know. We did for last year. Yeah. in the city of Chenew. Okay. But the commission can, on this case, because of what it did, uh, there would be an abatement on the value. So the taxes they would owe for 21, I think, see, I think it burnt the first part of this year. The taxes that would be owed would be uh, adjusted based on the value uh, for the remaining however many months in the year. And From the <coughs> time of the... Yeah. It's from the time of the fire to uh, the end of the year. Because we really can't adjust value previous to that time, right. Right, but we can. But the commission can right, adjust the taxes yeah. based off that uh, calculation. If it was after June 1st, then the taxes would be due in full. And then the portion that is excess is applied to next year's and next year's until they run out of money. So they just demolished the house this weekend. Yeah. So, yeah, that was pretty sad. I need a motion. You want me to go ahead and yeah, put it in? Yeah, okay. I will make a motion to approve the abatement on the fire structure. Yard. <laughs> I'll second that. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion passes to the bill. Yeah. They did a really good job of cleaning it up. I was just happy that it didn't set for years sometimes to see that. So they really were I'll bring you copy good at, at getting that done. Thanks, Ron. Mm -hmm. I don't want to skip you. Hi. I'll wait. 
I might skip you. I've already done it twice, huh? <laughs> <laughs> well, good afternoon, good evening, whichever. I think it's almost evening. Um, I actually had uh, Heather put on here a 15 minute executive for non elected personnel, which I do need to have, but I will need another 10, probably 15 minute executive for security to whatever, how you guys word that in regards to security. So, and other than that, that's all I really have, unless you guys so have you something need for me. Non elected, you need a and then another security. Yeah, we definitely need. There's an exception for security, so let's start with the non-elected one. Do you want to come back in, or can we just make two motions? No, we can come back in. Okay. How long do you want? It's always going to do things by the book. It makes it difficult. I know. Okay, I'll make a motion to enter executive session to discuss the job duties and performance of non-elected personnel and protect the rights to privacy of the individual employee. For 15 minutes, we'll come back at 5:15 with Lori and Seth in the commission. I'll second the motion. All those in favor? Aye. Uh, aye. Motion passes through here.
session. All right, I'll uh, move that we go back into executive session to discuss matters relating to attorney-client privilege concerning EMS. And we'll go back in with Lori and uh, Seth and the commission for 15 minutes. We'll come back at 5.35. I'll second the motion. All those in favor. Aye. Aye. Actually, they just use it in the whole county for us, but leave it because I'm like,
I am going to ask for an executive session. Do you want to do it first? Or last? On security? Or is this another one? To discuss. Um, Make a motion. Let's go to executive session to discuss matters relating to attorney client privilege for the health department for 15 minutes. We'll come back at 5 55 okay. with Seth and Teresa. I'm going to take Kevin instead of Okay. okay. In the commission? Yes. I'll second the motion. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.
like I saw Archie talk the other day. I told him he hadn't been in here in a while. He needed to come back and take some of the medicine. Bring David back I'd be willing to call David and see if he'll just show up and sit. <laughs> Okay, I'll make a motion that we go into executive session again to discuss matters relating to security measures of a public body or agency, um, a public building or facility, or the information system of a public body or agency for 15 minutes. Do we need that long? It's uh, concerning the health department. So it'll be with the commission and Seth and Teresa. Let's go, let's go 10 minutes. We'll come back in at 6.10, 6.05, sorry. I'll second the motion. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes three zero.
that you go over a few other things. So, as you guys can see, um, in your well, did I put this in the packet where there is? You got a letter from the state of Kansas. Yes. Okay. Johnson and Johnson. Yes. Um, right now we are 10 positive in our county and 1,821 is covered. Um, so 38 are in quarantine right now. So I think we're doing very well. I wanted to show you this graph right here. This is what's tested at the college. So I thought you might want to look at that. They have our, um, they have the, they have the Ottawa zip code because they use the college parking lot, but it is Chanute's. Oh, okay. Okay. So, um, so they did pull Johnson and Johnson. I did print out you a form to look at that talks all about the, what the snapshot looks like for Kansas and uh, where we're at daily COVID-wise. I won't go over because it's six o'clock and I know you want to go home. I plan on it. Do we have our total county rate yet? I haven't oh, been able to find anything. If our county rate is 31% of inoculations. 31? 31. Mm -hmm. So, but I thought I was going to go over that with you, but I, and I think you studied at home. That's well said. Um, so, the next thing is, we got a check from the um, insurance for the flood, and we also have some more bills, and that's going to be on the other side. And this is for the flood. This is what we turned into the adjuster. We expect we'll get paid for all of these. And uh, we guess we need to probably repurchase a few things, of course, you know and see where we're at. And right now we have the checks for $4,863.54 um, that went towards reimbursing us. Are these Advantage invoices mm -hmm. in this amount or not? These, these, are, are, these are for um, the flood amount that we sent to the adjuster. I just wanted you to see okay. what else we were sending. Um, so are you asking for this much more? I'm sorry, is that what you're saying? Yeah, I did ask the adjuster for that okay. much more. Okay. They, they are with. I just want you to know that's hopefully what I'm expecting. Um, I don't know how long Johnson & Johnson will be out of commission. Um, we do have doses of it. Um, we called every, our clinic today, we had a clinic today, and called everybody and let them know we will only be doing um, Moderna. Yeah, Moderna for now. I can always forget, always forget. You know, so. It is a two shot series, 28 days apart, uh, but it was sent to them Monday morning. And uh, so I don't know what to expect. I think we have 200 right now. Sunset month number two. Mm, Just so doubled our workload, but with the whole reaction, I don't know mm -hmm. what I've seen right now. It seems like I'm wondering if this is somewhat related to birth control issues. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. As, uh, we'll see. It seems like it's women of childbearing years. That's what they and said. they have not isolated out the whole problem. So it's a little early to. Johnson and Johnson was the only one you would give to anybody, if I'm not mistaken, 16 and younger. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, no, 16 and over. No, Johnson Johnson's 18 and up. Okay, so which one? Pfizer. Pfizer. Okay, 16, 16 and up. Okay. The only one, and they have refiled for 12 and up. Have they? Okay, um, we have gotten a new grant bridges and we have also upped our special health care needs grants and we have started parenting classes, taking parenting classes and have started mental health classes. Taking training, not taking mental health classes, to be clear. And we have a, a Stacy trained in um, first aid and CPR and we have a plan in safe sleep. So she's at 29 hours right now, and with all of the new things we're trying to do, plus we just got a $5,000 injury bill. So with all of the things we're trying to do, we thought with our money, for our last conversation, um, that as you can see, the Bridges Grant will pay for a total of 250 hours per year, including benefits. Hmm. And special health care needs pays for 260 hours per year, including benefits. Um, MCH Grant is at 36,000, and I expect it's gonna be that or higher this year. I expect, I hope to get more money this year. Um, I would like to add her on more time, possibly even full, because we are so busy. And so keep in mind, let me explain the parenting classes. They come from, they'll come from TFI. I spoke to them today. We will do these. And the parenting classes, right now we have a grant that's helping pay for them. But we will actually get paid from TFI money. So we will get paid for that. So that money will go back into... Um, the county, well, the health department. So for everybody we do, and there is nobody doing them in Neosho County, I'd like to point out to you, so it would be Stacy and myself. Um, and it goes up to the age of 18. So, and we would like to start doing it before they lose their children. But if they, even if they do lose their children, we want to do these parenting classes with them they can start getting them back, you know, and have an opportunity to regain the custody of their children because we know how important it is to keep them together. Um, so we feel like with that and making enough money um, and helping the parents if, and if we get the money from TFI, but if we have somebody that needs it, we will do it. I mean, because we want to do this. It's important to our county because there's nothing more important influential than family and parents. So with that being said, um, we would like to do this and I would like to add her on as a full time, at least so we can get this done and train to do this with these parents because we don't have this in the Ocean County and TFI was thrilled today. Um, free of course and it will be coaching and trying to see what they're because mental health is kind of ignored so we just kind of let it go we don't answer it but we see our people every day we want to know how we can help them we want we know where resources are but we want to know what's their need right that second and how can we help them right there and so we wouldn't be doing anything we shouldn't be doing, but we would definitely be trying to coach them and encourage them and support them. So I think you're saying even with the extra hours that Stacy would be getting, that the grants are covering that I for most so. of it. Yeah. yeah. She's been a great asset mm -hmm. to the health department. And the only thing, I figured it out, except for now, um, with any changes, I don't know, but I believe the only thing we would have to pay would be insurance. 
because you know they already take out everything else if you part time, of course you get vacation and holiday. So that would be a little extra too. But I figured it up and I feel like we would be very comfortable in doing that. Yeah. I don't have a problem with it. But you also realize that our budget may not incur that because of where we're at right now. So I'm just warning you, there may be a surprise. But I the grants should cover it. The more you offer for a community, it's bonus. So mm -hmm. I think that's pretty important causes that you reach yeah. that for. So the parenting classes are very, very needed. Yeah, they are, and a lot of that will be reimbursed by the court system. So mm -hmm. well, we just got to go ahead. Yeah. Okay. Um. So thank you. Um, do you have any questions on what we plan on doing? Well, as far as says, I do have a question on this testing at the college. Mm -hmm. Is this going to happen through the end of the year? I hope. I I'm not sure. They were going to stay until May. That's we're getting one or two people. I'm not sure if they're going to yeah. be able to stay. I just we live close to that, and I mean every time we drive through there, there's no one there. Mm -hmm. I, I heard that it was going to be through the end of the year, and I'm like. I, I don't know. Um, because there are other places in town that people can get tested. But they are free. Okay. But I think, I don't know if COVID testing is free. I don't know how that works. I don't, yeah. Anyway, okay. I was just curious yeah. how that. But my understanding is everything has to be yeah, But it is very slow, like one or two a day. Yeah. Beneficial places will be eight hours a day or how many hours a day. Two of them. Two of them. Yeah, yeah they're all. But I guess that's a state issue. But yeah. <laughs> it's gonna be a long summer. That's all <laughs> I can say. Do you guys want to go over the COVID stuff? Do you have any questions about the um, COVID stuff? The COVID information we presented. There's yeah. a lot of it. I think there's. It's looking pretty good for it, can't it? Yeah. Have you gotten, gotten much feedback on us taking out the mask mandate? A couple of comments, but most people have been um, either been very grateful that they can make their own decision. Um, so that's been a positive. And really, we haven't had any real negatives. Because um, our belief is, if you, and we say this, if you're uncomfortable, we'll wear a mask for you and um, if you are uncomfortable you have choices you know okay. I mean that's kind of the response I've got mm -hmm. yeah so I've had a lot of positive people think thank goodness I can breathe yeah, <laughs> yeah. I still respect those oh, that, yeah. that feel like yeah. they you know want to wear a mask and so mm -hmm. Yeah, it's nice to have We've that. We've had a lot of positive support from the community in that way. Okay. Do you have any other questions for me? I don't. Okay, so I want to explain bridges. Bridges, so special health care needs goes to the eight to five. So that means that we help them with um, getting their Medicare, Medicaid, helping them find resources, doing whatever we need to do. We also have a bilingual person. She works also with us. Um, and so she does um, Spanish speaking family. Uh, the Bridges takes them on up to the age of 18. So we can help them to the age of 18. So they bridge that gap from five to 18. So that's what that is for us. We hope to continue. And so, um, if anybody needs anything, that's what we will try to endeavor to do is make sure. And we're taking on several counties. We're not just doing one county. We have in commission of doing it in the counties. Yeah, no travel to you. I mean, or are you offering services outside of the... I don't exactly know how that's going to work yet, but I do know they gave us a travel stipend. I do know they gave us $2,000 for laptops. 
and different things like that. I do know they do the stuff like that. And yes, we have to travel to them, but if they need it, we'll do it. Consent agenda as presented with accounts payable of $839,437.71. Is that the same amount? Yep. So back out on there. Yep. I'll second that motion. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion passes 3 0. I'll move that we accept the minutes as presented for March the 2nd and March the 11th. I'll second it. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion passes 3 0. Now back to Noxious Week. Mike. I think, do we need Seth? Is that? Yes. Or who? Yeah. Put this on the agenda. Noxious weed. So, we don't know who's in charge here. I'm an expert on noxious weed. <laughs> My yard's full. Most <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, commissioners down your way. <laughs> <laughs> so, I guess my first question is okay, so the regulations have changed, and we can no longer hire an outside agency. To do our noxious week. They're not contracted out. Yeah, that's my understanding. That's the way I read it. Okay. So, have we talked to Steve Finley at all? I mean, can we hire him as an employee? I guess that's my first question. Or is that even. I'm sorry, that's just. Right. No, no, I, 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 no I, I, I would be happy to visit with him. If, but I don't know. Because he's, we have no when he started inside. doing this job, he very much did not want <laughs> to work full time for the county or, or as an employee for the county because he's got several other counties he does. I think it's Wilson County. And yes, Wilson County, County. And he's got his own business. And maybe that's right. changed, but that I, I didn't think he wanted that. I, I know he's very busy, but I didn't know. But is this all he does for all these counties? Is just not just we? No, I think he does oh, okay. uh, Wilson County, but then he's got his own uh, pest Long. lawn and, and okay. pest control business that's <clears throat> taken off and grown for him. And uh, I know he was even a little bit hesitant about signing back on to do this, and then the law changed, and that kind of took care of it. Whether we could talk him into hiring him as an employee, I mean, can we, we could still hire him as a part-time employee, right? Uh, we could. I, I don't know how could. soon we need somebody out there, but you know, typically with a position, we advertise it and see if we can get somebody. But it's up to the board. But I mean, 
whoever has to be qualified for this, right? Yeah. You have to yeah. be certified. Yeah. Certification. So, well, yeah, and that's you don't just go to the unemployment office. Yeah, office it's a so small so pool of applicants. The, the nice thing about this is, is he was licensed and set up ready to go, right. and then I had intentions of bringing a past employee back to do the frame for him, and of course he would work under Steve. But we—that's what we did in the past. It worked out pretty good. Actually. but I didn't look back at like the legislative history of it. It doesn't make any sense to me either, but the government does a lot of things I don't understand. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, my opinion is we hire a non-suite director. We need somebody out there to enforce the laws because I get uh, complaints all the time that we're out spraying the county road ditches, but, you know, my neighbor over here has got a field of Ceresa, you know, and I dealt with a neighbor of mine and you know who I'm talking about. Yeah. And uh, I do have a gentleman that is a uh, former Lynn County weed director, and he is licensed, he has a Class A license, uh, and he can do a san sanitary also. This guy here is already licensed. Right, I mean, you can put it in. Like, yeah, you can put it in. Yeah. Sure, sure, yeah. sure. I mean, I think we'd have to advertise as yeah. someone that's certified, certified right? Certified, yeah. Because I think within the stipulation or whatever, and then it's going to be, they will have to be licensed to be, like, not where you're going to pay them to train them to right. be there. Right. Yeah, and license gets a little pricey. Well, we need it by the end of April. Is that? I believe that's when his contract's up. Oh. Contract ends April 3rd. Oh. When does this come into effect at the state? I thought it was the state. I'm not sure. Oh. I thought it, that's what it was said the There's one part in there I read that said if, you, if you're under contract, it would allow you to finish that contract out. Right. In the so next year. Steve's terminates April 30th automatically terminates um, so it's kind of good timing in that sense that it's going to end and we're going to have a chance to hire somebody for this job and then the other thing that you may want to consider is is this a full time position and then because this has been brought up in the past the reason I want to talk about it now is there's really not October to February is a little sparse on the front of the garage. Right, and, that, and that's, that's part of what the... It was seasonal at one time. I know we maintained it as a seasonal position, so... That's part of why this, the way we did it with Mr. Finley was a... Worked out well. I know all that reporting has to be done by March 31st, I think, for the state, but if, if we went through an application process somebody on until mid-May, are we too far behind the ball by then? I don't know. I don't understand. I don't know what situation. It, it depends on the year, on the, the you know, the, the weather and the rain and a lot of the variables there. But yeah, we're here before long we're really going to need to start to spray. Mm -hmm. Usually it's they spray for thistles early summer, late spring, early summer. And then usually, like, I'm just going basing this off of Frank Geiger, what he did, thistles early on, and Johnson grass, and then the Teresa left of these in the fall. And there are other knocks and seeds, but that's the three big ones that are going to add out, like, tomorrow or Thursday. And Ranton said, you got two weeks to apply. Is that enough time? I think. Then you can so, are we going to advertise as seasonal then? Or should we just advertise? That's the part that's difficult because if it's 
if you advertise it as seasonal, you're probably going to limit yourself on that one. Hire some. I mean, I'm just asking. I mean, are we hiring someone full time? I don't know. I mean, that's it would be their jobs would change from October to February, I would think. But there, what do you mean by that? Because like we're going to be out spraying unless they do more inspections during that time frame. But what are you going to look at? To give them different duties. Yeah, you'd yeah. have to have a duty that would be more expansive during those months because they're not really putting down chemical on dead. Potentially part time, potentially full time, depending on depending on skill set or something like that. Well, this gentleman that I'm talking about has a Class A CDL uh, plow truck experience. He can come down and help you guys out. Yeah, you know if you got on. Salaries would be announced or based on your qualifications. Yeah. So again, sorry, this isn't actually underneath your department. So who's putting out the ads and who's going to be doing the interviewing? I guess it's that what you're asking. <coughs> I'll be happy to help out anyway. I, yeah, I thought Mark kind of oversaw. He's doing it now. I mean, that's who he's Well. I mean, we, we issued vouchers, which we have stopped that, by the way. I know I started to talk about that a while ago. Because actually, we didn't stop it. We just haven't started it because I don't think we can legally issue vouchers without, without license yeah. just the director. Mm -hmm. So uh, I got a lot of calls, not a lot, but several calls uh, requesting vouchers. And we told them, explained our situation. Themselves are they under supervisors because they work for him part of the time, but they're a boss this part of the time. That's kind of strange. Also, not just we need personal services has thirteen thousand yeah. dollars in it. So why was it ever taken? What did it used to be in the road and bridge? It see? was at one time. And why was it separated then? The director. Yeah, he was, was a director. He was not the director. director. And the director of road and bridge. And then we contract. Well, yeah, we didn't need a director because we had a contractor that was doing the job. Well, what what happened was when I came on board, uh, we, we had to hire a Knox Tree director, and that didn't work out. Uh, anyway, when it was time to replace that guy, the commission decided to just basically sub out the Knox Tree director position. I at first was opposed to that. I didn't think it was a good idea, but after we did it that way for a while, I really, I thought it worked out very well. And I'm, I'm going to miss that setup but if, if they go another direction. But, uh, but we, now that's, I guess, no longer an option unless we can talk Mr. Finley into just being like a, say, a part-time employee with no benefits or something like that. I don't think there's anything in there that says we couldn't do that. It just said they had to be a county employee, or, or not necessarily county, whatever municipality, you know, whether it's city, county, state, whatever. It has to be a, it can't be a contractor. Right. Any contractor. Well, I think what, like she was saying, someone needs to supervise. Well, and, and when Steve was doing this, he just basically answered to the commission. He came in a, a couple times a year reported to the commission. Um, I stayed in contact with him as far as like our chemical needs or Frank did one of us, you know, Frank was getting low on a certain amount of certain type of chemical he called D2 would order it and he would come in and, and uh, you know if there was a, a report of an infestation somewhere we would relay that to him and, you know, and he would take care of it. Uh, but ultimately, 
he answered to the commission, we just kind of helped out that time. Or he wakes up an hour like here, I wait so many hours in this time frame. Right? Mm -hmm. Thousand, two thousand hours. Yeah, you could do that. Yeah. A lot, so much time for this part of it. Also, do we rely on, I mean, so the commission has to drive around and look and make sure the unis are sprayed, or do citizens call you and tell you that they, they, they used to spray? track it? They well, used to actually have a map of where they're yeah. working and spraying. Yeah, yeah that was and, all and outlined. That's, that's the way it was when, when Frank was spraying under Steve's supervision. He, he would start at one end of the county and work his way. He would start at the east side of the county and run like the north-south road and just work his way west and he kept a map with him and he would highlight what he did. He kept a kind of a ledger, if mm -hmm. you will, of what he did and a map of what he did each day and and uh, it, it worked out all right. Uh, and he got everything sprayed as far as I know. Uh, uh, it's a lot of ground to cover. It is. Yeah. And people don't realize that. It's, it's like 900 and 62 miles a road times two. Yeah. You've got to spray each ditch. Yeah. So I just think we need somebody to enforce the landowners to keep up their end of the bargain. Yeah. Well, have we looked at the actual noxious weed policy since we last introduced it? It was rewritten in 13, I think. I can't remember exactly the date. There's a there's a whole much sweet policy. Have we even addressed like that? Statewide it's just policy or the county policy? Oh. County has its own policy. Oh. I was not aware of that. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah, I don't. So we did that. And so the, maybe we need to do some research and come back in two weeks, see what kind of applications we get to see what <clears throat> how we actually want to. I don't think you can really put out applications without what are you advertising for. What's the pay? What's the full time? Yeah. What's it part time? I mean, full time, part time, qual like what kind of qualifications are you asking mm -hmm. for? Um, who's I mean, who's gonna do it? Who are you gonna do it? You're gonna do it. I mean, how many qualified people are there in there? There's probably more than you realize. Oh really? Okay. Yeah. A lot of these, uh, like the people that work for the different oh. ag companies that do. Uh, spraying and, and fertilizing okay. and mm -hmm. things of that nature. Most of those guys, most of these facilities are going to have a couple of guys at least that are licensed to do what we need done here. So there's, and even, even some of the, the farmers are licensed. Uh, they have to be licensed to do uh, certain to buy in, in certain chemicals and, and especially in the amounts that There's, there's probably quite a few people out there that would qualify for it, but it's just how do we want to do this? I mean, it's a full-time position. It's going to be, you know, noxious weed six months and something else in six would months. Would you want responsibility <coughs> of that? Hmm? Would you want a responsibility if it has to happen in a week? Not really. Okay. Is there something? Well, I mean, <laughs> it's, it's, not about, it's not about what I want. No, I know, but I'm just saying this, we're, we're talking about. Yeah. Well, we so the Bridge Bridge always maintain trucks and everything else for the Knox and Swede. I mean, yeah. that, that is all coordinating that aspect of it and so we make don't sure that spray truck was running. And right. Do and we, we still, still have one working? Yeah. Okay. If you don't want to go out there and say, hey, you can work out for me for a road bridge, and you're like, no, I don't want that. Right. And that can be a problem, yeah. too. Yeah. Uh, 
somebody that wants to get an officer or director who may not want to get on a tractor in the middle of a snow plow or whatever. Yeah. That's, I mean, Paul's indicated he knows God is willing to do that, and it'd be great, but uh, he might be the only one <laughs> <laughs> out of the whole stack of applicants that's willing to do that. And yeah. you know, we don't know. state mandating us hire an employee yeah. in the middle of a budget year situation. True. Mm -hmm. and that's a good point. Mm -hmm. I mean, you, you tell them we have to do it. We do set aside the budget to do that. Right. So. Because we will, that's, I know that's part of the reason the commission at that time made that decision because they were able to, you know, pay Steve at like $21,000 hired a, a part-time seasonal guy with no benefits and, uh, that was a lot cheaper than, than hiring a full-time employee you know and then we didn't have this problem of hey okay, you're going to leave your office for two weeks six months and you're going to do something else mm -hmm. the rest of the year I bet there was in the past. There's I know there's, I know there's some. Um, but I, I don't know. There's bound to be there. I know there's I know there's a guy who was pretty healthy, noxious weed that we felt we adopted. I have no idea where it's at anymore. But. Well, the state has a, a set of pretty hard rules. We adopted one within the county too. I think that's ponying up on that now. Because they they fairly recently. I thought I emailed that to you guys. I had I looked it up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, there's a whole book. I don't know there's a book. But it's, I don't know where the old noxious weed records are at. certification and then he adopted that and then our sanitation was looking around the same time. I can't give you the no, exact I've got a copy of the sanitation yeah. book, but I don't have this weed thing. Yeah, I, mean, I didn't know. It we might have been a little bit before then too, so I'm yeah. just trying to go remember. I remember we it's, had to adopt it. It's probably it. mostly uh, state written policy. I would it, is, it was thick. It was a thick book. I don't remember seeing one down here. We, okay, let's see. I'm trying to see where we put it. It might be up here. It might have been back in the 10, we had our 10 on it. It was fairly old because there wasn't a sanitation when I came on. The old no person breaks the record of noxious weed things for two weeks? set down policy where it's either burning, spraying, and what were acceptable procedures to maintain. And the state sets down It might be, too. I might even have it. <laughs> I know where some of my old records are at, yeah, I might have it, but I have to go up in the attic and go find it myself too. <laughs> So can we just advertise for a noxious weed supervisor and see what kind of response we get? I don't know. Uh, okay. 
Or someone figure it out in the next two weeks. I yeah. hate to wait two weeks. Yeah, I know. It's and because, hard. so you get yourself into a position where you've got applicants that are applying for something they have no idea what it's going to be, and then they're going to withdraw when they find out. Or call. This, right. and one and one this is not what well, I. Yeah. Well, what are? Well, you didn't tell me I needed these credentials. Yeah, and you that really means. starts off on a bad relationship to just yeah. be like. So can we be without a noxious weed for? A period of time, if we end our our contract with Steve, and we don't find someone for a month or six weeks, is that okay? I don't know. I don't know if the state requires us to have one. Or not. You're not supposed to, but um, I don't know. So, decide who is making the job description. Who's doing that? hired to serve as a weed supervisor. Right. So the rest so of this is an easy fix. We just slash my road yes. for director slash. <laughs> but I don't have the license. <laughs> oh, we can, oh, we can get the license. We can send you off our education on that. <laughs> This took a real bad turn for you. <laughs> <laughs> it just keeps getting worse. Six months comes up with your next. That's yeah. Yeah. used to be a thousand hours. Yeah, yeah. Thousand hours. Yeah. That's what they set the limit to. I mean, In yeah. Past. Again, we only have a budget for thirteen thousand. So mm -hmm. you can say part time with potential for full time, depending on qualifications or something like that. Mm -hmm. Real, real, 
grill up your hamburger. I don't know if that'll four acid job duties. <clears throat> Ten an hour. Or... I don't know if that'll that might make people not want to fly, but I'm trying to get us out of this meeting. I'm trying to get out of this meeting. I mean, even maybe we could share with another county like Labette. You know, they work part time here, part time there. I don't know. But it'd be at the same time of year. It would be. That's yeah. true. Yeah. That's the thing. Yeah. But if there's just a supervisor. Well, if you're just hiring supervisors, you mean hire the regional director and then they hire somebody that's right. We could, we right. could well, I, share a supervisor and then we here. each yeah. would spray our own. Oh, I could. But I, I don't know. It's just kind of what's out there. I mean, every county must be struggling with this unless they already have one. Mm. We'll just do some research. So yeah, I'll talk, to, I'll talk to Jerry. We'll find out what other places are paying, how are they operating, things of that nature. Yeah. And go from there. Some of the... And even if it is two weeks before we decide for us an ad. I think we got... If we can do open and shut, though, I mean, we can do something like that to get it moving quicker. Mm -hmm. yeah. But at this point, we don't have enough to go off of. I don't know where we could post anything. Not at this very moment. short notice mm -hmm. but it's just that our contract is up at the same month that kind of makes yeah. it more difficult yeah maybe most con contracts aren't clear as mud <laughs> yeah exactly mm -hmm. water direction you know yeah you're just you just got a license more than a month you've got two weeks what do we want off the internet <laughs> I can grab your picture while I get one. That's it. Okay. To be continued. Yeah. <laughs> That's what she can do. <laughs> I need one short executive with Bob. Not elected. Not here. Yeah, yeah he's, he's, he's right there. He's oh, right Bob, there. you're out right there? Yeah, you're right here. For like 10 minutes. I'll make a motion to enter to executive session to discuss the job duties and performance of non-elected personnel and to protect the rights to privacy of individual employee for, I'm sorry, 10, no, 10, 10 minutes. minutes. We'll come back at uh, 7.05. It will be with the commission and Seth and Bob, the appraiser. I'll second that motion. All those in favor? Aye. 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 <coughs> motion passed.
discussion on changing the rooms. Yeah. So with the changes that we've had with, P with uh, payroll and HR, um, I would recommend and make a motion that we um, take our GIS office and put it no, in the personal, French office. Personal property. Personal property. Oh, I'm personal sorry. Personal, personal property. property, yes. Uh, office to where the payroll and HR were offering them both of those rooms there and moving our payroll and HR um, back basically just switching those two rooms I'll uh, second it. all those in favor aye, aye. aye. Yes, sir. Okay. Okay. Oh, okay. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, any comments? I have a couple things that says not in here. So, if I may, I'd like to add to that motion, or at least discussion, forty minutes for clarity. We've discussed. I know earlier it's discussed maybe not till June for the move. Originally, when uh, Bob and I spoke, it would be at the end of this week, starting on Monday was the plan. Is that still acceptable? I think my understanding was, yeah, starting next week, the move could the start. Move could start. Yeah. Okay. Um, on this transition of offices, yep. is there a time frame that, is there a window we can get it done sooner? Or? June's June be a little late. Uh, really, when she mails out the notices, the first, everybody has until the 15th to appeal. After that, the 15th is a hard set deadline. So even though it falls on Saturday, it ends. So after, I mean, after the 15th of May, uh, she didn't have, she'll be just finishing up some paperwork in case anybody came in. Otherwise, uh, she's going to have until then to appeal. And, and she's got to have it done the week before, the week after that, everything has to be completed. So, so what is that? Well, the so, meantime, you can do certification. so, like next week? Could the week we, just before it would be next. Like, she's so finished she's, this week, and then Monday we made all the arrangements for help. Um, what you and I had discussed. Yeah. But trying to, I got to find I have to find out where she's at as far as. Because she has to print the last week of the month. That's when she got to print renditions or valuation notices, the person in the property. So, um, which means next week she has to have everything completed by next week or by the end of next week. That's the week in between the first and the end of the month. So, if you're going to do it, um, the printing doesn't take that long because we're only 2,500 renditions to print. So it's going to take a day or two to print them. So if we do it last week of the month, that would be that would be the best because she's not going to work on anything. All she's going to do is print. She just generates the file and sets it to print. And it can be printed down in our office. CIC was coming back. We have a new hire, like I just get one day, but you know, told you guys. Um, and she's transitioning slowly from 8 to noon for this week and next week, and that's why the move was best for next week. And then her full week would be the week now we're talking Almost about. Would be, yeah. So instead of having her situated and CIC present with just her, because right now from 8 to noon, it's all of us. Um, and then our noon to four is cleaning up and addressing issues. But then when she comes back, first day start, then it's she's doing the whole payroll, her and CIC together to monitor what she's learned for these last two weeks. I mean, I can't imagine that's going to take that long to transition because everything's empty down there, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. It's just file cabinets. And hooking up computers. And desk. But that desk down there doesn't have any drawers in it. No, we've moved her. I know. I'm I think saying her, her desk right. and 
course, we've got to gather up all the paper for the sure. move. But, um, and we are yeah, I mean, it wouldn't take but a couple of days at the most. Oh, I think we can get it done. Well, get it done in a day. day. Not well, day. you could move it in a day. Still got to get set up on the other end. Right. And we got to move. Got to get it. The well, we phone have, needs to be. Her, we're, we're her extension needs to be. Fire up. Kansas Communications come in on Monday, yep. and Advantage is ready to come on Monday, yep. so that they're the ones specifically taking away her respect out of the computer and your system and the importance of her work. They're the ones moving that, they're moving it. not us, because we wanted to make sure that was safe. Yeah. And the gym desk is already taken it's apart. Gone. It's, it's gone. gone. It's in all. It's in. Yeah. So all the actually filing caps and stuff. To it's just again. filing cabinets. You can move yeah. right now. I mean, yeah. If I have to, I can shove those filing cabinets somewhere in our open clerk's office, just the floor. I mean, it won't be. Yeah, we can. Yeah. We can push it. David would come in and move the desk. He came at five this morning to move a desk for Holly. Yeah, Holly had already moved all of her stuff. Yeah. Before, because she knew she knew he was coming. Right. There's their, their situation is a little different. I mean, they can stop what they're doing and. Stop completely. Oh, they were shut down most of the day because of moving. So, Carl, on the other hand, is a little different because, like I say, we're getting ready to mail valuation notices. So, we've got to make sure we've got everybody's stuff valued before the end of the month so we can make sure they go out uh, on the 30th. Surely, the way we can get this done. We can give you some help too if you just need some bodies to move furniture with. I mean, for a couple of hours or something. You know. Right. And her desk would only be in two pieces. The L would only be in two pieces to come apart to come down. Yeah, she just got one of the metal desk. It's right. not hard to take it apart. Right. Um, I think if we already have Kansas communication and advantage coming on Monday, I think we need to make that our target day. It's going to be inconvenient for everyone. Yeah. I know your department's important, but payroll's also important to a hundred of our employees. Um, so we need to get you know things established. And we have someone new coming in. It would be nice if she was, you know, not having to move her office after being here for a week. That makes it a little awkward. Well, she has so. no. She has nothing. She has a computer. And yeah. Desk. There's nothing in there. Yeah, in the file cabinet. So. We'll do anything we need to to make it easier on you. I mean, that's not. Right. And I already have that. I'll shove stuff in my office <laughs> wherever so that that room's clean. We can get her, we'll make her a priority, have her set up first before we ever worry about. Yeah. It's fine. And we can do it that way. So. Okay. I mean, I, I don't know what else to say to help you. Well, we just need to work together. You want to get it. So we can fix mm -hmm. some payroll. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So and we can still keep our personal property tax yeah. available for everyone. Yeah. So. So I'll keep okay. this appointment just with the family too. And if we need to have her phone transferred to where she's not taking calls this time and give her a piece to get settled into a spot, we can do that too. What happens is when you move the phone from one place to another, the phone will ring but the HR or the payroll uh, extension that will ring. That's what Kent. Car no, yeah. Yeah. But I know that's because they came in today and took care of Holly and Robbins because they had to switch sides. So they had to switch phones. I mean, they switched. They had to switch the extensions for them. Because mm -hmm. <clears throat> even from one side of the office to the other, it's a different extension. It comes kind of like plugs in. Have them come back. Yeah. So. Well, if you guys got any problems, call up the chairman. Yeah, that's right. I don't mind. <laughs> they don't want to call me. Yeah, you don't want to supervise. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. All right. Are we good? We'll make it happen on Monday. Yeah. Okay. Yeah.
We good? Bob? Like I said, if you guys decide on Monday, Heather, we'll make it happen on Sitting Monday. for good? Oh, I'm absolutely good. Okay. Yeah, I oh, just, yeah. I mean, I know Bob is too. He's, I mean, he's not trying to make this difficult at all. I mean, we will help him do whatever. Okay. So, yeah. I mean, he's, and it seems like you're upset. I don't oh, I'm not upset. upset. No. If I was upset, I'd be yelling. <laughs> okay. So, no, I'm not upset. Maybe it's not the <laughs> Okay, just make no, it. I'm just, I'm just looking at, we have hard deadlines. No, I have to me, just like everybody else. Yes, sir. And uh, this move would have probably been better a month ago or a month from now. But not a month from now, but in a couple of weeks. But if the commission decides it's going to be, she got to move on Monday, then we'll make sure she moves on Monday. Well, whatever we need to get that transition going, we got to do it. So, and it's not anything to car or anything else. It's mm -hmm. we got to make this move. We all have a job to do, and we need everyone to be able to do it. Right. So, okay. Okay. Um, I just have one thing. Um, since we don't have the mask mandate, I was wondering if our room can be put back into. Our normal positions. Um, are we? I don't. Are we ready to transition to that? Because I think there was a lot of public today, and they're still, you know, having to set out there. Um, I am. That's fine with me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I would love that. Okay. And we have. Can we I mean, get we the, have shirt, the chairs. Yeah. Yes. So. <laughs> so we can go to. That's fine with me. I mean, you're sitting in the middle. I so. That's can fine. we get the uh, JPs home? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Yes. We could burn them. There for a while, you could That's actually the election. You could sell it yeah. pretty high for That's a while, and you couldn't get it. <laughs> so, so, anyway, so Heather will be back over is. here, and and Seth. I just think it's time, and the, I just want the public to know that we are open now to the public, and um, we will have seating and table. yeah, that table, that table, yeah. and and then also I was wondering if we can buy a podium of our own, that. so that we don't have to. So. Um, we have ones that have the mic already built in, so all of that will go. Can we make this ledge thicker? Because mm, my no. book does okay. not fit on there. <laughs> I think that if you guys want to look into this, uh, we'll take it out of the, the, the commission uh, budget, but I think it's time to get our own and um, to, to have something professional and, and get set up again and get back to the way we were. Sounds good. Anything else, Commissioner? Yeah, Coach, uh, say that. Anything on the tax sale? I've had multiple calls. <laughs> we do. Oh, we have a date? We didn't, we didn't call me again. Well, because I haven't published it yet. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> but I did check with Greg, and he said that was working again. So. Okay. It's the day of my and birthday. Why did you do that? <laughs> Well, it's not, at least it's not also, your birthday. Oh, no. <laughs> I was looking at that purchasing uh, resolution. You have birthday money. I was looking at that purchasing uh -huh, a PDF resolution. of it. You can send a PDF or something mm -hmm. where if I want any, I can like highlight anything okay. I, I have. Yeah. I wrote out some things and I thought it maybe be easier if I have my changes, if there's anything you guys want okay. to see. Yeah, so we can bring that back yeah. next week. I think I just we just sent it to Mike. I think today to the bid the bid resolution. Mm -hmm. So it's a good start. Yeah, I just so. plan on kind of want to see a few more key tenants. So. Good. I'm gonna send, uh, if you don't have it in a couple of days, just send it to us. And okay. Remind us. Sounds good. I mean, they were just asking if there was a listing yet. Yeah, we did. All. Gail sent me a revised and then another person we did. Uh, we'll get it. So Hopefully, all were needed. As soon as I can. Yeah. <laughs> I hope. I hope. Legal sure fees are down that way. Yeah, yeah. yeah, legal fees. <laughs> <laughs> no, they're set. They're <laughs> set. Um, but uh, I'm, I'm hoping to get it in by the end of the week. Okay. 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 I'll make a motion to adjourn. I'll second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.